Megan Fox. Yeah, Megan Fox has the story. Megan Fox. Megan Fox. Megan Fox writes at PJ Media. Each Tucker. Damn it. Man. <laughs> I cried for two days. <laughs> Megan, thank you very much for that. So, um, <laughs> I can, I can explain the bed thing. <laughs> if you don't show up and vote, up your ass. Like Jesus going into the temple, he's like, I gotta whip this! <laughs> Get out! Get, Get out! out! The lovely and wonderful Megan Fox. Not that hey. one. <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> Not the weird one that drinks blood and has toe thumb. Megan Fox. Megan. And honestly, Megan, if you don't like it, I'm sorry. She's the devil. Megan. Megan Fox. Megan. Megan. Megan Fox. I've been very nice to you, although I could probably maybe not be based on the way you have treated me, but I wouldn't do that. You've never met a like me. You want to tangle? You want to go? Holy Holy sh- too much cussing on this, I guess we didn't believe it, so we gotta turn it off, but I just it just it's it, it, You pissed off the wrong woman. Oh my god, I have been a soup and Megan Fox runs wild on you, brother. She's the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Not for publication. <laughs> Destroy. I'm Megan. 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 Megan Fox. Thank you. Cheers. 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 Mm. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, everybody. I'm your host, your medium smart journalist. Uh, I'm, I'm here ready to go for the day. It's me, Megan Fox, and I'm here with IT Goatee Brad. How you doing, Brad? Doing good. The, your, your medium smart IT help is here. <laughs> you are way more than medium smart. <laughs> way more. Uh, I have, you know, I have new buttons today. I'm excited about it. Should we get to the first one? Because I can actually use it right now. Ready? Here we go. We have breaking news, everybody. There is breaking news in the fetal attraction case starring Laura Owens and Clayton Eckert as they battle it out in an Arizona courtroom in Maricopa County, guzzling all the monster drinks she can handle. Laura Owens is awaiting, awaiting some news from the courtroom, and so are all of us. But here's the first piece of news that came out. Yeah, Corey Keith is done. He's thrown in the towel. He's, he's out. Yeah. As soon as we watched that full uh, hear- status hearing, it was like, oh, this dude's not going to last. <laughs> this dude is not going to last long. You know why? Because underneath it, like, he's probably a decent dude. Oh, yeah. And he had no idea uh, what he was getting himself into. Still, though, like, he should have Googled it. Like, he could have Googled it. Like, Corey, I know it was a rookie move, okay? These are hard lessons learned. But and next time, for fuck's sake. Oh, I should. Okay, for I'm only fuck's four sake, minutes. Megan. For fuck's sake. I said fox. I said fox. For fuck's sake. Do your homework, Corey. Do the homework. Google. Use Google. Google is a thing. You can actually just type it in. Like, and Laura even Owens. Funnier thing, he started his firm on this case. Mm, right. So he left the uh, discount family law practice that we were kind of mocking when we first <clears throat> met him 
<clears throat> he left them shortly after him. Yeah. So he founded his own private practice with the Laura Owens disaster. Really? <laughs> Medium demonetized. I will not be demonetized for that because I said Fox very, very clearly. I said Fox, just like, and I can prove it. I can prove it because look at my merchandise has it all over it. I have merch right here in the merch shop that says, oh, for Fox sake. See, I can prove it. It's a, it's like a motto here. Go to the merch store, pick some up. Uh, Sarah just got a green one that looks amazing. She sent me a picture of her mm -hmm. wearing. So yeah, Sarah Adams sent me a picture of her wearing the, uh, her new sweatshirt, oh, for Fox sake sweatshirt. Looks awesome. Aren't they comfy, Sarah? I have one too. I have the objection hearsay one and it's one of my favorite sweatshirts. It's so comfy and soft. I always get the, like the really large size cause I like big, huge sweatshirts. Um, have you seen that <laughs> stupid big blanket company ads? Big blanket company? No. Oh, so I got to pull this up. So I get occasional ads for this company called big blanket company and they, you know, you buy a blanket and you 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 throw it on yourself, and you're like, oh well, let's um let's give it to the to the to the to the wife to the husband over here, give him a little bit extra, but it only gets about this long. Well, this company decided that they're going to start making um even bigger blankets. So you you look at these blankets, and they're they cover entire sofas because they're so big. <laughs> It's because we can't figure out how to share things. Is that what that's about? Because people can't share. I don't know. All right, look. Let me show you. Look at this. Oh, look at that. These Those blankets, are giant. They're, yeah, they're they're basically comforters, but they're even bigger than regular comforters. <laughs> Is that something you need? Uh, apparently, it's something I need because I keep getting advertised for it. It's, <laughs> it's ten by ten for one hundred and fifty bucks. A hundred and fifty. That's a lot of money. That's too much. They've also got uh, robes and hoodies and whatnot for extra large um, wear. We just have our own couch blankets. Everybody has their own. All right. So here's the docket, by the way, uh, that shows you. I can't wait. Yes, I can. Come on. Let me let me zoom in. No, no. Nope, not letting me. Can you right click on the image and go? I'll try. I thought I did do that. Or no, this might be Twitter. They might be. No, it's about it's it. Reddit. It's Reddit, oh. and I can't make it work. So anyway, if you zoom in, you can zoom in if you're watching on YouTube at least. And by the way, good morning, Rumble. Good morning, locals. Everybody is. Uh, we're we're streaming on Rumble and YouTube, and the locals live chat is open. Case documents filing date, March 12th, motion for withdrawal of counsel. Motion, and the note says, motion to withdraw as attorney of record for petitioner with client consent. Oh, thank you, Brad. Thank you for figuring that out. So this is interesting and important because it, it has something, a, a clue in here that we need to pay attention to. And that is the with client consent. That makes a big difference. So without client consent, if he just tried to quit, uh, the judge could say, no, you're in it. You're in it forever because mm -hmm. it's so. However, with client consent, he can just walk away and the judge is not going to do anything. Uh, and now it's up to Laura Owens to get another attorney or to file to be in it pro se. This will not delay the case, I do not believe, because we are too far along in the process. We're ready for trial. Depositions have been taken on both sides. Most of discovery has been turned over. There may be something coming about that. We'll see. That's We're waiting on something else to hit the docket this morning. And if we get it, uh, I will be reading it and we'll see what it is. But I do not think, and I don't know what it is, but I do not think that it's going to delay the trial. I don't think that this trial is getting delayed. I think the judge is going to say to any new attorney, you take the case as you find it, which is the rule. When you enter a case, when it's ready for trial like this, you don't get to file for, you know, continuing extended continuances. You don't. You have to take it as you find it. This thing is going to trial. And it is March. The trial is not till June. 
she has plenty of time to get a lawyer who will get caught, who can get caught up on this case before then. If she doesn't, it's going to be on her. Now, on the way up, by the way, I don't think she's going to have any luck finding an attorney to take. She's gone through all of the attorneys in uh, Scottsdale and Phoenix. That's how this is. He's lucky number 13. This is the Baker's dozen. It's just so crazy to think that uh, she's able to, she, like, the only thing that I can think of is that Corey saw through the bullshit and was able to say, look, either we have to settle or I have to go. And then she goes, no, I'm not settling because I was pregnant and I know the truth. So then, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that you're right about this. It's like he had to have come across the truth, which is that she has no evidence of any of this, these claims she's been making. But he made a big mistake. If you recall, uh, Corey Keith in court the day when we watched that hearing, the status hearing, mm -hmm. he made a statement to the judge that where he vouched for his client. Yeah. That was a big mistake. Jeff, do you want to come in and, and hang out? You're welcome to. I'll send you a, I'll send you a link. Um, I know you're probably going to bed, though, but just in case you want to hang out, I will send you a link. The judge, so he said to the judge, I believe my client. So he, a member of the bar in good standing, a, an officer of the court, made it look to the judge like he had seen some kind of evidence and he believed her. Mm -hmm. So now I think he needs to file more than just a motion to withdraw. At this point, I would strongly advise him in a non-legal <laughs> capacity to file a motion to, um, what do they call it? A motion to clarify okay. and inform the judge of the fraud he knows exists. This is a civil case. He's actually required to do that if there because and it's specifically because he made that he vouched for his client in front of the judge. Is he so, able to do that? Because it's not just civil. We're under family court rules, and I don't know if civil also. No, this goes is in. it's it's considered civil. Okay. Family court is civil court, and he really needs to submit a motion to clarify, Corey. Corey, you're not a bad guy. We can tell that, like, you're not a bad guy. You got involved in a case you weren't prepared for and didn't know about. You didn't have the underlying facts. But now that you know them and you told the judge, you told Judge Julie Mata that you believed your client, that was a pretty big statement. We said at the time, holy shit, don't say that uh, because now you need to tell her. You need to tell her that your client lied to you. And that's important for your own reputation, I think. And, you know, consider. Also, that we believe a documentary is being made about mm -hmm. this. And so there is also the, the, the issue of how do you want to be portrayed in this thing? You know, like, ugh. I mean, I don't know how that's going to go. I'm not saying I do know. Maybe he'll get a nice, maybe he'll get a, a, a sympathetic cut. I don't know. But I think it would be, I think you'd go a long way to getting a more sympathetic cut if you filed a motion to clarify and inform the judge. Uh, Jason J says, Megan, can you mom shame YouTube? I haven't been getting notifications. Jason, there's no, there's no fixing YouTube. YouTube is asshole. It never sends notifications. That's why you are supposed to be on MeganFox.Locals.com where you will get notifications. You'll get so many notifications. You'll get sick of them. You'll get, you'll get sick of the notifications. You get so many. So, so go to MeganFox.Locals.com. Follow me for free. You don't have to subscribe or pay or anything to get those notifications. Turn notifications on. Make sure you download the app on your phone and you will never miss another live stream. What do we have here? Uh, BT Marine, thanks for the super chat. Thanks for starting off the day on a nice note. Every time I hear your intro, I know laughter is ahead. Oh, there should be plenty of it today if what's coming, what I think is coming is coming. I am saying thanks for the super chat. Megan sent you an email. Oh boy. Hopefully you just sent it now because if you sent it earlier and it's missing, now, wait, there it is. Yeah, uh, every every live stream we, we talk about locals because that's the only way you're going to get notifications of the daily live chats, 
of uh, when we do subscriber only chats for meme farming. You're, that's the only way that you're going to be able to find out we're doing all those fun things is uh, by by signing up for locals. You don't have to pay to be a member of the um, to join up and get the notifications. Right. That's all. For, and there's a lot of free content there as well. Just so, just some of the content is paid. Like I did a free cooking stream the other night, and then I did like a subscriber only one last night. Uh, probably we'll do another. Roast? Oh my god, so good! I have not made that in so long. It's my grandma's pot roast, and oh, I missed it. And my husband, everybody was happy. It, it there was hardly any left. I gave what was left of it to the dog this morning for his <laughs> breakfast. I'm sure he um, enjoyed it. Oh, and I gave him the bone, of course. Yeah, he's he's in heaven. Um, and no, it was delicious. Oh, that pot roast is so good. And in fact, my husband said it was the best one I've made. And I think it's because I did the, because uh, I didn't actually have a can of soup. So I made my own. It's oh. always better to make your own cream. If you need a cream soup for something, it's so much easier to, or better flavor to just make a roux yeah. and make whatever flavor you're looking for, for a cream soup and just make it. I did that. Uh, with beef uh, beef bouillon, like the better yep. than beef bouillon paste and beef broth and flour and butter, like just made a roux and made mm -hmm. it into like a cream soup. And then I uh, added the Lipton onion soup to that. That This is such a good recipe for a pot roast, you guys. It's just Lipton onion soup, a cream soup. Uh, do it my way with the beef broth though, because that was really good. And then uh, carrots, potatoes, onions, and then in a Dutch oven, for you have to brown the meat first and then in a dutch oven it i did it at 375 because i was trying to speed up the time normally you put it in for like at 350 for maybe three hours mm -hmm. i did it at 375 for two and a half hours and it was perfect good yeah it was so good yeah we did uh grilled cheese and soup last night and um, oh, i love that i love grilled it, cheese and soup what kind of soup tomato soup so my wife got uh, tomato soup, and then I grabbed a, a Chunky's Chipotle chicken soup. Oh. And I, I think it messed with my stomach, though, because I was not feeling good the rest of the evening. Mm, that's no good. That's no good. All right. So I am looking around at the... I saw it. Sarah, thanks for the super chat. Wrote you an amazing chat GPT story this morning all about... Yeah, it was all about my ADHD. It was very funny. <laughs> It was very funny. I did read it. It was very funny. Oh God, legal vices. Let's pray that doesn't happen. Let's no, pray. I hope to God he was never alone in a room with her. I warned him early on. I said, Corey, don't be alone with her. Mm -hmm. Please don't, um, because you just don't know what's going to happen. All right. So here's what I plan on doing today. Since we are waiting around, we are waiting for the the Maricopa County Court. Probably just opened eleven. So it's almost 12 two hours yeah it's ago? open it no it didn't open two it opened at like a half hour ago oh i think they open at 8 30 so I thought arizona was mountain time aren't they three hours behind me or are they no. two now they're two well they're two because oh the time change right i forgot about that all right so they opened two hours ago um 55 mm -hmm. so we are waiting to see what else will end up on the docket today that's my guess so I thought I would open the phones and let you all tell me what you think it's going to be. I will take some phone calls today. But before I do that, I just have to pull up my um, today's thumbnail because <laughs> it makes me laugh. Hold on. Well, she's doing that. Um, for those of you who aren't <laughs> science nerds like me, um, Elon Musk um, was able to launch the Starship Flight 3 out of Brownsville, Texas this morning. And if you haven't seen a Starship launch, I would highly recommend either going on x.com uh, slash SpaceX or going to youtube.com slash um, NASA Spaceflight and checking out their coverage of the launch this morning. It was incredible. Some of the views that they were able to get from the rocket was amazing. And this is the first vehicle that was able to do a re-entry. And they had cameras on the front flaps of the vehicle pointing backwards. And you can see the plasma wrapping around the vehicle as it's coming in for like a, two minutes. Um, they don't believe that the vehicle survived the re-entry, but the view was just incredible. Brad, everybody knows that, that, that those are faked in Hollywood studios. Oh, yes, of course. 
I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right, here's my thumbnail from today. Can anyone find Dave Neal? <laughs> anyone is find Dave? Is he behind the hair? <laughs> He's wearing short shorts. Um, no. <laughs> Someone actually noticed. They're like, oh my God, you got short shorts into a cartoon. <laughs> there's a couple of shorts. There's one next to the lady. And then there's I know one because it right. wouldn't, it, it's the, it's clearly the male one. Cause that one's a female, but uh, I tried to make it. I had to tell AI so many times <laughs> how to do this picture. I think it's Maricopa County. <laughs> I know it didn't Hoos. spell it right. Maricopa County Court Courthouse. Conti. Conti. It's not even Con County. Conti Courthouse. <laughs> 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 he is wearing a linen shirt. He is. He's wearing a linen shirt. Oh, I I tried to make him have red hair, but instead they gave the guy next to him red hair. <laughs> so. I and his shoe is melting into the ground. I don't know what is wrong with AI. And then you've got the tripod stand that has nothing on it. And the guy who's Holding wearing a it, camera yeah. in front of him. Uh-huh. And how about my eyeball? I've got one wonky eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> and the knees. Yeah, why do our knees look like that? Oh, gosh. It's so funny. It's so funny. I and cannot. His shoe is melting too. Yes, she's melting too. I don't know what is no, going on. No, his shoe. This. Look at his shoe. I know. I told you his shoe is melting into the ground. Jeez. And then he doesn't have another one. He has no other foot. His <laughs> leg just goes. He has no foot at all. Well, it's kind of there. It's it's. That he has level. a leg, but then it goes into the foot of the guy of another guy behind him. Yeah. It's really, I mean, AI is so bizarre. Oh, there's his foot. Here's the other foot. It's way over here. Do you see it? Uh, Can you see my mouse? It's underneath no. the tripod that has nothing on it. Look, it's the matching shoe. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I don't know why it does this. I really don't, but it's funny. All right. Um, I do love... Um, where is his left hand? That's a good question. <laughs> Maybe that's why my eyeball looks like that. <laughs> look, look again. <laughs> apparently, apparently, you're a puppet. <laughs> <laughs> is is it, am I getting goosed in this cartoon? Oh, it's You're funny. You're getting something all right. <laughs> Why am I pigeon toed? I don't know. It just does these things. It does. Here, let me show you the other th the other uh, images that it created because that's always fun. Let me show you the other ones. I'll show you the ones I didn't pick. <laughs> All right, so here's a guy. <laughs> and look at the people behind them sitting down. <laughs> Why are people sitting? Well, it's doing its accurate uh, BLM uh, impersonation. <laughs> but this one is a way better um, uh, Dave Neal. I love oh, this yeah. one. Way better Dave Neal. Um, okay, this one is not so not so bad, except they put too many people in shorts. And I was like, not so many shorts. I said one guy in shorts. <laughs> and then they put me in shorts and I was like, no, no, I don't want to be in shorts. And he's got the red hair at least. So I know. <laughs> wait, there's more. There's more. Look at this one. I'm like, I didn't say put me in shorts. I what said put hell? Dave in shorts. What the hell? They put you and Daisy Dukes in a bodysuit. <laughs> like <laughs> Maricopo County Court Ice. <laughs> <laughs> and look at this woman, the blonde one. She's wearing short shorts too. Look at this. What is this? A bath that's like a 1920s bathing suit? What is happening? <laughs> what is happening? I said Dick Tracy style because I like the Dick Tracy style. Look at this one. Look at the muscles on this guy's legs. Oh, jeez. <laughs> look, this is a good Dave Neal one. Look at how short. Look at how yeah, short the shorts that's are. One. That's a good one. That's a good one. That one's funny. Okay, wait, there's more. 
All right, this one didn't listen to me when I said cartoon. I don't know. What, oh, I, I forgot to put cartoon. <laughs> you got John Kerry <laughs> in the front there. Jesus. <laughs> this one is weird, too. It's like, why are you facing the wrong way also? They put all these people facing the wrong way. You're supposed Maricopa to be waiting. Maricopa Kaunti. Maricopa Kaunti. Kaortatus. Maricopa A. Kaunti. Here's the thing. You, in the prompts, you're giving it what you want. How are you misspelling it? Like, I don't know. Why are they misspelling it? <laughs> no, it did not spend. No, Bing AI generator is so good. It doesn't take two hours to do this. It's like almost instant. Wait, how come I can't pull these ones up? Here we go. So these were the first ones. And I was like, where are the women? Why is it all male? I said, gaggle of press waiting outside a courthouse anxiously, Dick Tracy style. But where's Brenda Starr? She should be in there. Where where are the women? So I had to redo it. I was like, uh, can we have male and female, please? And then it gave me this lame one, which I don't like as much. Uh, and this one's not as good either. It's okay. At least they're facing the right direction in this one, but it wasn't as funny. This one was kind of funny. I'm putting um, the link in the chat for everyone who wants to play with it. Oh, God, it's the best. Look at, I was making a turtle lady the other day, too. These are good. I used, this is the one that I used, but there were some some other ones. Look at this. I like that one. That's a good one. This one's pretty good, too. <laughs> that one's just weird. <laughs> oh, my God. This one was bizarre, too. I said, I said, with tattoos. Oh, geez. That's that's wild. Let's see if it fits. I have anxiety over the roof. <laughs> My child just fell down. You are not a nice person. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Oh, my goodness. I'm getting weird emails, too, by the way. Weird emails? Mm -hmm. Similar to Tug? Weird. Yeah, sort of. Look at these fun ones. I like these. These are my my cooking ones. Oh my. Aren't these cute? <laughs> it just did that. Is it Dick Dick Tracy style? It wouldn't let me say barefoot in the kitchen though. I said I have bare feet because I wasn't wearing socks. I was because like I'm... the 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 sheer amount of people who want feet pics is vast and they know that as soon as you start requesting feet pictures they're like nope, we're we're, we're just going to get right out of that. This is the one I ended up using, but it was weird because I didn't say like a booby dress, but it just did that. So I thought, well, that's funny. That actually kind of works. So we'll <laughs> we'll keep it. You should try some Norman Rockwells and see if what it gives. <laughs> Nor oh, Norman Rockwell. Ah, yeah. AI is so fun. Google, I mean, Bing AI image generator is the best one I found. Oh, and I like these too. These are good too. I didn't use these, but these are good too. Why is she wearing a French maid costume, though? I didn't say that. Apparently, it's Fran Drescher. <laughs> but I do kind of like that it's the, um, it's like a, uh, um, it's, what is that? Who's that artist with the dots? He's got a German name. Crap. The know. artist with the cartoons and the dots. He used dots to make um, those 1950s cartoons. Hmm. And I can't remember his name now. Look <laughs> at this one. Jesus. It's like OnlyFans cooking channel. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> what is happening? So, 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 Lichtenstein. 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 Thank you, chat. Thank you. So, so funny. You mentioned OnlyFans TV. There was literally an advertisement. I, I said OnlyFans TV. Yes. I don't OnlyFans remember saying show. that. So, oh, OnlyFans cooking show. So we, I literally had an advertisement for OnlyFans, and they're saying they were getting um, OnlyFans creators together to try and do a cooking show to impress a master chef on OnlyFans TV. They literally happened last night. I'm like, the, and I, I was showing it to my wife. Really? I was like, this is nuts. Is and this going to be like the Weather Channel that does? Um, uh, like, there's a there's some girl who does the weather in the nude or something. I heard about. I think that not was on the Eastern not European, on the, not on the Weather Channel. But I'm sorry yeah. that that I'm not defaming the Weather Channel, but it, there is some 
like OnlyFans sort of thing where somebody does the weather yeah. in the nude, which I thought was funny. Um, I liked this one's hair. This one's hair was really good. Um, but I just think it's so fun to play with these the, with uh, images. All right. Uh, so why don't we open up the phones and see what you guys have to say about this? Now, remember, Brad can hear you, but you can't hear him. Right, Brad? Yep. Is that how it works? That is how it works. All right. Uh, let me see if I can. Let me change. So before let we me try a... something. There we go. Hold on. I'll be right back. Remove. Now I can do this. Okay. So the Google phone line is open. Call in now. 617-8585 Fox. If you have, um, there's something on my monitor. It's making a black spot on my face. Stop that. All right. If you have questions or predictions about what we're going to hear, what is next in the Eckerd v. Owens case, call in. Uh, or if you have, uh, if, if you're having fun with AI and you want to share something, or if you just have questions or you just want to talk about whatever, I don't really care. Uh, dating advice, whatever it is that you need, just give it, a, give us a call. 617-8585-FOX. And uh, say your name. When Google asks you for your name, say your first name and I will pick up the call. I'm anxiously awaiting it. Okay. Um, <laughs> what are we going to talk about? I don't know. Whatever. I kind of want to know what you guys think about this Laura Owens, Clayton Eckert situation. What do you think we're going to hear? What do you think is coming next? What are your thoughts on um, on Corey Keith quitting? And <laughs> Tim Tim Swope says I can't call in. Florida nudist camp. We didn't say video call. <laughs> Brooke, how are you? Turn down the uh, stream in the background so I can I can hear you. I can't. I can. It. You can't hear it. Mm -mm. Oh, that's because I did something dumb. Hold on, Brooke. Hold on. Okay. All right. Nope. Uh, no. No. Okay, Brooke. How are you? <laughs> Good. How are you? Good. What's going on? I just, this is my first time catching your live, so I was so excited. Awesome. And I think um, the, and I think she's going to either go into some sort of rehab, saying she was either has mental problems or on drugs, and try to get out of the situation before the next court date. So that's interesting. We've actually been you know, giving her some advice throughout this entire thing and telling her she should like, you know, right. check, check into a mental hospital, you know, say you have a problem and you're going to go get help and then go get that help. Um, right. I think the chances of her doing, you actually think she's going to do that? I think because she can't control the narrative anymore, that she's not going to want to do that. But I think her parents or they'll get some advice to do something like that to explain her behavior. Well, I would hope so. I really hope that that's what happens because, here. Because, I mean, that's not normal to do this five, six, seven times. And if her parents, knew, I know her mom was on one of the calls. I mean, that that's disturbing. Wouldn't you want to get your child help? I would. Well, except they haven't in so many, in all right. these years, they've never, they've never done that before. And this has happened so many times. I mean, normal parents, I think we can't really blame her dad. Her dad's been sick for a long time, but I think, okay. I think her mom has something to do with this. She appears to be egging her on, having her call. Right. She's in the background saying he's a joke, honey. He's a joke. Right. Like Instead of being like, <clears throat> sweetheart, we need to get you some help. You know, so I, I don't really I, see that changing. Because they have money. I think because they had money and no one's really taken them on before, they don't know how to react to this. But this time, the money doesn't matter. She's got herself in a situation that money can't get her out of. Mm. And she wanted the attention. She brought it to, she brought it to the media. She wanted the attention. And she now sure she's did. got it. She sure did. She, 
she she did it herself. That's the worst part. But it's it's good karma. She if she wouldn't have gone to the media, we probably wouldn't know. And this another victim, there'd be another victim. But this is anyway. True. I love your show. Oh, I love your you. hair. Thank and thank you. you for taking my call. Thanks for calling in. <laughs> All right. Call from Julia Boyle. To accept, press one. Was that Julia? Julia? Sylvia. Sylvia. Sylvia, welcome to yes. the program. How are you? Uh turn down the turn down the broadcast behind you. I just I just turned it off, honey. Okay, great. How are you today? I am doing so much better with you on the big screen and comments. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> it is. You are so much fun. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh my gosh. I have a suggestion for the little lady in you, in the video we're talking about today. Okay. She really needs to hook up with Lynette. Maybe invite Lynette to come out and, and give her suggestions on how to get by with things. Because Lynette is, what, 60-something? She's 60. She's gotten by with all this evil till now. <laughs> and had eight hus or seven husbands. So she's managed and to get them down the aisle. Seven times. Absolutely. Absolutely. See, if, they, if she would just invite Lynette to come out, then Lynette can maybe be under the radar, not get served with all the future paperwork. Hey, it's a win-win for everybody, right? This is true. Sylvia, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much for calling you, in. You are so fun. Keep up the good work. Thank you. All right. Call who's next? Witness, Witness protection you. program. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> to send a voicemail. Welcome to the show, Witness Protection Program. How can I help you today? Turn down your radio. Okay, bossy. I got you. Got you. Got you. Bossy. <laughs> this is Sarah. What's up? Hey, my hey, homo. Sarah. How are you doing? I'm your number two homo, but I'm doing great. <laughs> number two. You're never going to let me forget that, are you? <laughs> no, no. Why should I? <laughs> I think that Laura should go and live amongst the horses, and I think that would solve everything. Go and live amongst like the if horses? She, like, yeah, like she needs a GPS tracker, <laughs> you know, like put her in with the horses and just make sure she stays there and doesn't bother anybody. She can jump horses and do whatever the fuck she wants all day and she'd be out of everybody's hair but if she tries to escape there's like an invisible fence that would like shock her back in <laughs> even well, better uh yeah. in virginia Brad. there's a i don't know if i'm just looking out for humanity you know yeah well unfortunately though with her new um you know with her redo that she did of her horse farm apparently yeah. the shading is not quite correct and it's really hot in there so she's going to need to watch out for that getting overheated i think maybe yeah, she she's going to need some big industrial size fans in there industrial sure. size fans for sure i could picture it now are you building it i haven't if you build it they will come i haven't built it yet i haven't built the horse stable i'm running out of room on my desk for my lego project oh, shit. what are we going to do I'm shelving units. Fox is on it. I have Fox an entire. On it. She's your number one. I, I have an entire. My number one homo is in the chat too. I have. Uh, yeah. I have shelving. I have need to put shelves in behind, right in front of me. I have two walls that could take some shelves. So perhaps I need to start having Mr. Fox put in some Lego shelves. I don't know. Yes. I think you nailed it right there. Problem mm -hmm. solved. Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks for buying the sweatshirt, by the way. I really liked you in the picture of it. I thought I think it looks great. And I love the green color with the orange fox. I know. That They're turned out gorgeous. so nice. It turned out so it nice. It was. It's really soft, too. It is really soft. My objection hearsay one is really soft, and I love it. I need to order a for fox sake one for me. So maybe I'll get yes, a, you do. maybe I'll get a bright pink one. The pink and orange are two of my favorite colors together, too. And I have the t-shirt. But I need the. And your damn birthday is coming up, so hey. It is. It is. By the way, so Sarah's uh, significant other is an amazing musician and singer. You, she's so good. By the way, tell her how much I love her. Her voice. Wow. I will. I will. She is amazing. All right, y'all are calling me, Sarah. I love you. All right. I'll Deuces. You later. Bye. Who's this? Call now? from Lorraine Lamour. To accept press. Hi, Lorraine. Welcome to the program. What's up? Hello, Megan. This is my first time talking to you. Yay. I think, 
Hi. I think that after this case, no matter what happens, there's going to be a new product called throat condoms. God, throat condoms. It could, yeah. be, a, it could be a really good, um, what do you call it? Uh, what do you call it? The uh, a, like, a, what do you call those novelty products that they sell at Spencer's? Okay. Ironically, they're called gag gifts. So. <laughs> <laughs> you walked right into that one. <laughs> ironically, ironically, they are called gag gifts. Oh, that was a good one. That was a good one. Oh my. I don't now, think I could have I, come up with that. Any, I, I don't. That was great. This is what I why I need you, Chad. This is why I need you because your humor is just perfect. Thank you. And I, I'm the one who kept posting. I'm from Rochester because that's my hometown. But oh. uh, when you when you mentioned something on a stream, uh, I was like, oh my gosh, I know right where she lives. So I don't want to dock you, but. <laughs> Yeah, please don't. <laughs> please don't. <laughs> please don't. That would be great. Uh, by the I way, let me ask you something. If you're you're from Rochester, like you're a Rochester, yeah, I'm right there. I'm okay, right Rochester, mm -hmm. please explain to me. Okay, what, I'll try. What is the fascination with the garbage plate? I don't know. I I. It's just something they came up with at that restaurant. I don't remember if I've ever. I think I've walked into there. But it's not like my family went to it. My we didn't go out to eat very much until. Have you ever had like, one? I my I don't know. I don't think I did. But oh, I, oh, honey, this I, is not something you would forget. It's basically yeah. a plate of barf. You would not yeah, forget eating this. I think you can. You pick different items like a cheeseburger, French fries, this, that, and the other. And when I first heard it when I was a kid, I thought, "Do they serve it on a metal garbage can lid? Is that what they're?" <laughs> Okay. No, no, no. Like, they, they call it gar it? they call it garbage because it's garbage, literal garbage <laughs> that you would normally throw out, and then they put it on a plate for drunk people in Rochester. I know the chat's so confused. Let's explain this. I, All right, I've so, got a page up for it, but oh, she, Brad's, it, Brad's oh, pulling up a Brad's pulling up a picture, but we can't share it simultaneously and keep the call. So yeah. we'll share it after I let this one go. But the garbage plate is, it starts with a bed of usually home fries or French fries. And on top of that, you have mac salad. Oh, yeah, with mayonnaise and everything. Mac salad, uh, <laughs> two hamburg two cheeseburgers, just the burgers, uh, sometimes cheese, sometimes no cheese, two hot dogs. <laughs> then there's a meat sauce. And when, when they call it a hot sauce. But it's just beanless chili. That's all it is. It's not spicy in any way. It's just gross. I don't, I, and they top it with this glop. And that is what you're supposed to, and then sometimes ketchup and mustard all over the whole thing. And that's enough for two people. Yes. Oh, it's enough for four people, five maybe. I mean, it's disgusting. And the, enough for everyone tells me that you have to be drunk to eat this. You probably do. That may be the reason it's sold. But that's the Nick Cahoos, right? Nick yeah, Cahoos. that's their, they're the famous ones. Uh, Elephant says, yeah. did this plate start from a dumpster dive? We should probably ask Lynette about that. You are exactly. a nice person. Um, <laughs> okay. Thank you for calling in. I sure appreciate you. Thanks for being a part of the audience. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Thank you for helping. Oh, Call whoops. from I didn't mean Wendy. to cut her off. I didn't mean to cut you off. To accept, press one. Welcome to the program. I missed your name. Who's calling? Wendy. 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 How are you? Good. How you doing? I'm great. Hey, I found uh, Lynette's um, Siamese twins separated at birth. And honest, her name is Michelle. Oh, no. And you, you honest, this is crazy. You can go to... Um, uh, on Rumble, Charlotte on the web, and this she has all this Michelle stuff, and this lady gets away with everything from the court. She was supposed to give her husband the house back after the divorce, and she just said forget it. And she does this and doxes people, threatens people, goes after them, gets their channel down. She she is Lynette's Siamese twin sister. Is honest. is that is Charlotte on the web her channel? No, that Charlotte on the web covers Michelle. It, it says on Rumble that Charlotte's channel has been terminated. 
And I'm, okay, so and I'm not finding on, it. Okay, so she's back on YouTube then. It's on the web, on YouTube. Oh, on the web. Okay, I'll have to check it yeah. out. Does I'm she... not good at going to Rumble, so I, I haven't watched her for a little bit, but it's on the web oh, on YouTube. There's a bug on my keyboard. I just, oh, these stupid bugs. I just put my hand down on my keyboard, and I, I had a bug. There was a bug on my pinky. Oh, yuck. Um, yeah. I don't, I'm not seeing it. Maybe she got taken off. On the web? Oh, oh wait, no, I found it. I found it. Okay. I think I found yeah. it. Yeah. Look right. back in her, her playlist on, on uh, Michelle and all the crazy stuff she does. Okay. I will look. Thank you, Wendy. Appreciate okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Take Bye. care. Have a good day. All right, Brad, show the garbage plate quick before someone else yeah. calls. So you've got fries there. You've got some mac salad on the left. Cheeseburgers, chili, yeah. onions. Oh, my God, you guys, Red it's hot. so gross. Good Lord. It's so gross. I mean, I people eat this in Rochester, and they love it. Like, they're proud of this thing. They, It's not a box elder bug. It was one of those. It, it's like a, a false ladybug. They're not actual the ladybugs. Japanese beetles. Yeah, they're Japanese beetles and they are they infest this room and I don't know how they get in here and then I end up sucking them up in the vacuum cleaner. I feel like a murderer, but I can't help it. So the webpage that I found that on said that it, it can go from low class hole in the wall places to high class places and there's even a sushi version which I don't even want to know what that looks like. Hang on one minute there, Faith. I'll be right there. All right. Uh, I just answered a call. So, um, sorry. Say what yep. you were saying, Brad. There's a sushi version of this garbage plate meal. No. A Supposedly. sushi version? Are you kidding me? That is disgusting. There is a sushi version of the garbage plate at Nick Tahoe's? I, I don't think, not at Nick specifically, but. Okay. I, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. Like this is culture that I can't understand and I don't want it. Right. Right. Let me see if I can add this back to the stage without doxing anybody. Hold on. Each restaurant puts their own spin on it. There are no, some. No, have... I can't. Why does it do that? I don't know why it does that. All right. Uh, Faith Dodo or is it Jane Dodo? Who's, I, I, I didn't hear it quite right. It's Saint Dodo. The long lost. Saint Dodo. Dodo. Got it. Got it. Welcome to the program. How are you? Long time listener, first time caller. Big fan of yours. <laughs> Excellent. I'm a big fan of yours if you listen to this program. Thank you. You may have harassed me a little bit on my Reddit comment one time. Oh, no. I was in the audience. Got some, got some good <laughs> Wait, stuff. Wait, do, do I need to pull out my Reddit voice? Yeah, it's Tell okay. We are, we are now, you know. Tell me all we, about we it, are, Dodo. So I have some real, I have some real theories going on. So what are your thoughts on um, Karen, the lady who wrote the note? Because a lot of people have tried to reach out to her and she will not respond to anyone. Yeah, I did too. And no response. Um, I think I, my thoughts are this. I think it's possible that she was um, fooled into writing an affidavit in court that was submitted because there was an affidavit in court with her name on it. And I don't think she wants to discuss it because it's possible that she knows that she's been misled. I don't know. Or maybe it's that she believe she still believes uh, the lies. I, I, I don't know, but I really, do I think that someone actually wrote that note on a napkin? No. On an airplane. On an airplane where you can't hear anything except. No, I don't. No. So I don't know. I don't know what to think other than did she just find this person's name and use it? Although she's been, she do used that. She's been, oh, yeah. impersonate. but then if it yeah. were me, if it were me though, and someone had impersonated me, I would respond to everybody and I'd post a public comment. That's not me. I didn't do that. Oh, well, I, I agree. So I have some thoughts about Corey too. Okay. So I'm wondering, part of me thinks, okay, the extortion email was the line for him, but I don't get exactly vibes from him that like, he's got a, how do I say this? He, he kind of tolerated a lot more than most ethical attorneys would have in court um, and presented things like the pregnancy um, in a manner that I, I believe he probably knew was false. 
um, I'm wondering if she ran out of money to pay him. Uh, I think she had to pay him up front quite a big substantial amount, like a put down a retainer, probably 10 grand. Um, what I think she hasn't run out of money simply because I have some information that I don't know if I can say it, but I will say that I don't think she's run out of money yet. We do know that her parents yeah, are restructuring their funds. Well, okay. Cause that was my, I was wondering if, if he blew through, if he, because he would, his hours that he's had to put on this case have to be pretty atrocious. So I was just wondering, I'm like, well, I wonder if he made her put down more money, you know, if he already spent the retainers. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But if that's the case, then um, she did start a new business. So I, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but she I am a seller. Charity. I read that on the uh, the her LinkedIn page that she's the CEO of Word Salad Inc. And I don't know, I couldn't figure it out. All right, the chat is reporting uh, that we have a docket update. Let me please check with my source. Let me please hey, the check motion with my source. To compel yesterday on the eleventh. Uh, Saint Dodo, thank you so much for for calling in. I'm going to go and check this out. All right. Um, it's weird. It, it says it was filed on the 11th, but it wasn't posted to the docket until today. Right. It was. It was filed on the 11th. That is that is correct. And it took a really long time to get up there. Let me find out how long it's going to take us to get it. Do you have the docket pulled up? Yeah. All right. Put it on the screen. Let's look at it. Move windows. Oh, damn. oh, I just figured out how to not. I think you just crashed their uh, website. There it goes. Perfect. All right, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna shut down the phones for a second. So uh, hold on with your calls until I put the number back up on the screen. All right, we've got the motion to withdraw. The motion to compel. This is the one we are waiting on. This is from, uh, this will be from the Respondents Council. Motion to compel. This is asking for evidence. That's what a motion to compel is. A motion to compel is we are compelling discovery. So we all know that Laura Owens has withheld discovery from the respondent from Clayton Eckert's team. So a motion to compel is going to be very interesting to read. And I am finding out how long it's going to take us to get a copy of this. There are people standing by to run over to the courthouse and grab it once it's up there. And now it's been posted. So that means that it is uh, available. Now, let me check my email. And it would be a public document that we can then request. Right. So now someone can go over. Now, Maricopa is so behind the times on everything that they just don't post a, you know, a digital copy to the docket. They make you go there in person. If you request it not in person, like if I were to request it, they send it to me in the mail on a USB thing. It's snail mail. Can you imagine how many USB drives they go through on a yearly basis? Oh, my God. It's just ridiculous. So I forgot to hit the button. Do, 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 do. And we have breaking news. The Maricopa County Court clerk has finally published the new new documents in the Eckerd v. Owens case. It is a motion to compel. How long will it take us to get our hot little hands on it? I cannot tell you, but I will have it sometime today, we hope. And I will bring it to you when we get it. I like this music. This music is fun. I stole this from Dave. He has slightly different music, but uh, I think it's hilarious. Yeah, it, right, so it's go good. Ahead. It reminds me of a like a two thousands era um, breaking news, like there is a a car chase in progress or something. <laughs> right. Right. Um, okay. So, oh, I have other news in the uh, what the Hales case. I do have other news there that we can talk about for a minute. I did just order. Um, a new trial, a hearing in front of Judge DeThomasis from 2021 that I have on good information should be pretty interesting because the same players are involved. Mark Feather, 
and Silverman. And uh, it may be the origin story of when it all went wrong for Mark Feather in <laughs> Judge to Thomas's courtroom. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. I, I don't know. But I did order it. I paid for it today. It cost me $60. I did ask really? for the redacted version. Yeah, they charge you $35 per proceeding. So I couldn't get the entire day of uh, his hearings, the day, the first day that uh, Jeremy was in court, because that would have cost me like over $400 because they charge you instead of per hour, they charge you per proceeding. And like, I, I hear that he goes through proceedings fast because a ton of people don't show up. So he's just like, okay, you know, dismiss, dismiss, dismiss. That's why he's going through them fast. Not because he's adjudicating anything, but because people don't show up and he just dismisses it. Mm -hmm. So I now have, I have information about a case and I have the documents, you know, we could start reading those. I have those. We could actually start reading about that case and then we're going to get the hearing and we'll be watching that whenever they send it to me. I think it's going to be more than a week is my guess. Oof. It's going to take more than a week. I, if I wanted it in a week, I would have to pay extra. So it was $35 for the hearing, 25 extra for the uh, redacted thing. And, uh, oh, somebody sent me a message about a, about a Lego link. Hold on. They sent it on, by the way, that number on Google, you can actually send a text to as well. So if you just wanted to get me a message there, you can text it. Uh, where did I get that? Where did that come from? Weird. I keep getting these. No oh, there it is. It's in the texts. Duh. Okay. Here it is. Tell Megan, I just wanted you to know and have this link. It's for buying Lego bricks. It's for it's from all over the world, and you can get all the specialty pieces or buy in bulk. All the Lego YouTube content creators use it. This is where I got. The, it's called BrickLink.com. It's a great site. Don't let your husband know, or he'll spend all your money there, like a <laughs> gambler with a casino nearby. Oh my. <laughs> Tell everyone on stream so they can shop there too. I don't earn any money or anything from this. Also, I don't have a shop on there. So literally no money earned from me there. Hey, that's really cool because I'm looking for a specific piece. I want to make uh, the, the moon bump on a character, but I can't find a character body that has the attachment piece on it so I can attach a moon bump mm. to it, but I need it to be detachable. I don't want a pregnant Lego person. I want a detachable belly. Uh, and I don't know how to make that without getting a body that has a, a tat, like an attachment, you know, if I had that, I could do it. So I will check out Bricklink. Thank you. Oh my God. There's so many, uh, things on Bricklink. Yeah. Yeah. There's some really cool 16,000 minifigures. Ooh. Ooh. Huh. Let me see if they have a pregnant one. I bet they do. No, yeah. they don't. If you're, um, while you're looking at that, I've, I've got this pulled up. Um, so this was 36 seconds of video. He just won't quit with this. He just wants you to believe that rockets go to space. He wants you to believe that th this place is not flat and mm -hmm. that there's like actual space up there with like things flying around. I don't know why he keeps doing this. We all know this is done in a Hollywood movie set, Brad. Well, maybe in the 50s, but not now. We're not stupid, Brad. But okay, I guess we have to sit through it. Oh gosh, 36 Just seconds. Kidding. Just kidding, I want to see it. Ooh. That is so cool. Oh my gosh. That is so cool. I'm not falling for this, Brad. Kitty. We're not falling for this, Brad. So that, that is cool. that is like some of these like, Look at that engine. Look at that. Well, no, that's 33 engines on the bottom of that booster. Isn't that and something? They're there was one rocket that was close to this and it was called the N1 that was uh, an attempt to be one of the the biggest and best um, rockets um, created by the Soviets and that program did not uh, survive. They launched, I think, four times, but none of them were successful. But um, SpaceX was able to make that rocket and it's the first 
um, rocket of that size able to take off? I blanked out there in the beginning. I'm not sure what was said after the first couple of words. I don't know why I'm so like science adverse, but I'm like, yeah, it's cool to watch things blow up though. I mean, it, it is, I will give you that. It is a really cool, um, <laughs> no, who guessed it? Who guessed that Megan's not a flat earther either is the earth. That's true. That, yeah. That's very true. But I think it is. I think they are funny. Um, I, Porcelain Thun oh, yep. Porcelain Thunder says it just surpassed the Saturn V in terms of power. Actually, that's not true. So the NASA's uh, SLS rocket surpassed the Saturn V, and the um, Starship doubled the engine output of the Saturn V. So there's been plenty of um, rockets that have um, beat the Saturn V in terms of power. All right, question. Let me see. Uh, all right, I have to send an email. No, I have to send a text message. Hold on. Brad, you can just keep talking about your nerd shit for a while. I can, I can do that. So, um, nerd plus. out, geek out, Brad. I give you permission. I mean, nobody's buying it or anything. Of but course go not. Ahead. Why would they? Why would anyone listen to me? <laughs> so, we what says, it. can you tell me how we? we will make it through the Van Allen radiation belt. Cause I don't think we have, um, we certainly have, and there's definitely ways to protect, um, humans through the Van Allen radiation belt. Um, let me just, so the Van Allen radiation belt, um, because, uh, if you have ever used a compass, the compass points based on the magnetic waves, and those magnetic waves come from the dense iron core of the planet that uh, is spinning rapidly, and it creates the magnetic field. And that magnetic field helps protect the Earth from most of the radiation that's coming from the sun. The Van Allen radiation belt is the period of there's some small gaps in that um, magnetic sphere that's surrounding the Earth, and there's radiation that lives there. So it's a matter of um, how do we ensure that when we send someone out um, past Earth's gravitational force that they're protected from this radiation. And there's a couple of ways that um, you can do it. You can either add lead um, to the um, spacecraft in order to help shield it. The problem is that lead is incredibly um, dense, so it becomes really hard to add it to... Um, capsules and whatnot uh, another one that actually um works really well is water water if you um say you're going on a long-term um uh, mission um you can actually um use water to surround the entire um not not the outside of the the capsule but um you would have like a steel wall some insulation and then water and that water actually would do very well at blocking the radiation trying to come in. And it doesn't irradiate the water. You're so smart, Brad. You have a big brain. Yeah, I, I don't know how it stays inside here. I don't know either. It's 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 amazing. No, but really, those are all like, it's amazing he can just pull these things right out of his head, isn't it? it it's so funny how my husband is like you. He's science minded, you know. And, um, it always, it always amazes me. Like I've got the opposite. I'm like creative minded and, and, and word minded. You know, I go for the, I go for yeah. the opposite. I'm, I'm a right brainer and you guys are left brainers. And, it, and it's funny because us right brain people just don't understand the left brain people at all. And I'm sure it's pretty similar. Is your wife the same as you or opposite? She, so funny thing. She went to college, um, for a digital arts degree. But then, ah, was... so she's more on the creative side. That's interesting. But not that you're not creative though, because you probably are too. No, I'm terribly, I'm terrible at being creative. But um... <laughs> that's not true, because you're a really good problem solver, and that takes creativity. Right, but I'm not a, um, I'm not a traditional creative. We'll, we'll go that way. Mm -hmm. But she ended up um, wanting to go into IT. Uh, and, um, I helped push her into that field. So she's, um, in the same field as me, she does help us, 
um, support. But um, it's just kind of weird because she didn't, um, she went through the courses to do her digital design, but um, she didn't, um, she, as she puts it, the problem with artists in college is if you're not in the top 1% of your f field with your portfolio, then you're basically stuck trying to um, scratch your way to the top. Hmm. And if anybody has a bingo card out now, now is the time to hit the Dave Neal sighting. He's standing on a chair again. Damn it, the, Dave, in your short shorts. Don't demonetize. Sh God Put dang it. De demonetize. You know they demonetized my channel the other day, when, or my, uh, my stream the other day when you were on, and I think it's because of your damn shorts. Sexuality. So you're too sure you're too hot for youtube dave yeah, did you see my thumbnail today did you the sensors they they uh the someone's um you know fire alarm started to go off i guess did you see my thumbnail today no i missed it sorry oh god oh, well great. see if you can find yourself in it let's see who wears short shorts <laughs> oh boy if I they mean, dare wear short shorts i look like a tennis pro with the legs there those are really good <laughs> I, know, I, know. I mean I, what do i what do i do i selling chocolate in germany what is this <laughs> <laughs> this is bing ai and it's not Am good I a it's, journalist or a boy scout troop uh, leader <laughs> i don't know but we came to the, the chat came to the conclusion that that guy in the short shorts is goosing me <laughs> where is his other hand wow oh yeah you've got like sort of um pigeon toed legs and look at the look on look at the eyeball, the weird eyeball. Like AI it's so... must have you in some sort of weird fantasy world. <laughs> either either I... way, I think those shorts are not short enough. And they're, they're not short enough. Way too strong forearms. I like those. I just I've never been able to grow my forearms. Yeah, I know that the forearms are kind of ape-like though. It's it's an odd thing. It, it Bing AI is my favorite image generator. I have to show you another version that it pulled up and I think is a way better version of you, but it wasn't any good of me. So of course I used the one that was worse of you. Uh, Cause this show is about me. It's I always not... get told I look like, <laughs> like the worst version of something. Like I got, I, I get told I look like Timothy Chamelay's uncle, you know, like who, who wants Timothy to... Chamelay? Oh, come on. You're a oh boy. Gen X. You are out of the loop. He's I dating. Am. I'm, uh, I'm one too of the old. Genders. He's though. He's Willy Wonka. I mean, I'm I'm in your generation, Dave, and I don't even know who that is. Oh, um, Timothy Chamelay. Okay, well. Um. Uh, so anyway, I I can't stay for long because I have a story I'm I'm working on, but I don't know the details. But I do know a new motion to compel is dropping right now. Yeah, yeah we, we saw, saw it, it on the on docket. The docket. Yeah. Uh, so, so I want to know how long is it going to take us to 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 get our hands on that. Well, I've cleared my. I've literally been in, in painting the nursery. I'm covered in paint here. Um, been there, done that. Well, yeah, I, I've just been waiting for for something to break and and uh, you know doing busy work in the meantime. But I kind of thought this would break yesterday, but apparently there's a little bit of a delay in the in the systems that might be making this go a little longer. So I would think. I mean, I'm my schedule is cleared. I think something's coming soon. So wow. here's an interesting thing about it. So the motion compel was filed on 311. The right. motion for withdrawal was filed on the 12th. So as soon as Corey and Jane Doe got this motion to compel, how do you think, How what's the likelihood that that is what started the breakup uh, between them? My guess is, my guess is that he was already out and this just sped it up. So he was already out and then he saw this and he's like, all right, I can't even make it. Oh, wow. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> These shorts are way better. I mean, tr trust me on June 10th, <laughs> if I'm not on the court steps in the shortest shorts, <laughs> you got another thing coming. I'm going to have pockets full of. <laughs> look at this pads. dude's legs. <laughs> look at what it did. Oh I didn't gosh. say create a muscular guy in short shorts. I don't know why it can't figure. Look at put me oh in short gosh. shorts. <laughs> wow, you're looking smoking there. <laughs> Look at these people in bathing suits. I don't know what this is. Oh, I love AI. Wow. I can't get enough of it. That's my goal body. Your AI <laughs> is my goal body. 
And they always tell people like, don't shame others about weight or size. I want to look like that. That's yeah, right. I know uh, we're big into fat shaming not, here. Not for me. Sure. I want to look like you in <laughs> AI. I want to be a, <laughs> a female journalist. Here, this one's not bad either. The, except the shorts are a little long, but this is my favorite one. They got this the hair my, going on. Yeah, the hair is perfect. And it, although I don't know why they put glasses on you. Uh, but I love this. I, I absolutely love this. I could see you wearing this. I don't know why there are people sitting though behind all these people standing. This is what I can't figure out. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's kind of like a up the skirt sort of. That's like a voyeuristic kind <laughs> yes. of thing happening there. I don't know that your your AI clearly is kind of do dove into uh, the uh, the fantasy world. You're well, very I say I think it. I think it might be the Dick Tracy comic style that I put over after everything because I like Dick Tracy comics. And so I think it's drawing from that, which was pretty, I mean, the women are drawn pretty uh, attractive, shall we say, in you the Dick certainly Tracy could, comics. For sure. Uh, so maybe that's what it is. But yeah, I'm okay, sorry. So what I'm trying to figure out is how long do we have to wait for this? Because now someone has to, because Maricopa is so dumb that you have to go to the courthouse in person to request a digital copy of something. Then they hand it to you on like a little USB drive. And then someone has to drive home and upload it. I mean, how long is well, this? Am me, I going to be waiting again another day? No, no, no. Let me tell you this. I've got somebody in short shorts on the way to the courthouse right now. So Oh, the good. short, the short shorts are actually a. You know, it gets very hot in Phoenix, so it's kind of good for circulation. But also very aerodynamic when you're in the courtroom <laughs> and people are waiting in line. You can kind of, you know, kind of move your way through when you're in. It's basically a pant, uh, not a pant suit, but a pant short. Um, I think we're gonna have this in the next. I mean, I think we're gonna have it in the next hour, but we'll have to see. It could, oh, it, it could so. be not till tomorrow, but I kind of cleared my schedule yesterday for it. My patients so did I. losing their mind because they're like, you overpromised. And I'm like, you get out if you don't like this. this hey, you like cannot, you cannot, listen, we cannot determine when these things, when the court is going to get its act together and actually publish documents. For one, it's spring break there. And I think they're probably understaffed. I don't think this was intentional in any way, but they probably had to make sure they went through and redacted what needed to be redacted. And that's going to take some time. So yeah. we can't, all we knew was that there was going to be something happening. We thought it was going to be yesterday, but it turned out it was going to be today. And it's a complicated business, folks. Complicated business. I know. And in like last or two weeks ago, right before we had the bombshell information coming, I told people it's coming. And then and then they had that moment. They were, you know, just a couple of people where they go, Oh, you're full of shit. And then an hour later, <laughs> take this motherfucker, just throw it. Just I'm I'm like that salty mom who's throwing the soup at the kids. You don't want this, just throw it at them. Eat it, bitch. <laughs> Eat this slop. Julie wants to know, does Dave own short jorts? I actually had to retire a pair that I owned because they got too short for even my standards. Um, <laughs> as as I gained a little weight, the, the the added weight gain sort of pulled the shorts into directions they they weren't intended. Reverse gravity shorts. I've know. had that problem. I've had yeah. that problem with shorts that I had. My favorite pair of short short jean shorts. I had to eventually get rid of and you know you curse out the dryer as if they shrunk it's like no what <laughs> shrunk was your ability to not eat sugar and <laughs> i've gained about a solid 10 pounds I, I went to the dmv yesterday and i lied about my weight i lied <laughs> to he said what are you i said i'm 180 i'm 184 and a half like why did i lie about my weight why like she was like i don't care if you're not telling the truth and i was like i'm gonna give you my goal weight i'm gonna give you my summer weight and uh, hopefully i can get there i'm gonna look at that driver's license and say do not you know lie here i don't know i almost lied at the doctor the other day because she says i've got your weight down here as and then she said a number and i went oh she goes this has it changed and i was like maybe yes <laughs> and i had to tell her 10 pounds heavier uh, that oh. hurt that hurt. I, I know, like, like, you know, you're like blaming the uh, geomagnetic pull. Maybe gravity's <laughs> moved. An asteroid flew by. Clearly, it's not me. I'm not the issue here. Maybe it's the scale. That's the other thing. I'm always like, this scale is off. It can't possibly be right. And yeah, you change the batteries and then your weight goes up. <laughs> oh, it was actually doing me a favor. The scale was doing me a favor. I like to hold on to something when I weigh myself. I like to just give my, like, hold on to just something a little nice. Um, oh, man. All right. So. We just have to know uh, that this is 
going as fast as possible. Someone is going to the courthouse as we speak. She's, she or he is traveling to the courthouse to get the documents we all want to read. I always. What are you going to do, Dave? What are you, are you going to go live when when you get it? I'm going live on Patreon in 30 minutes. And if it breaks while I'm on Patreon, I'll probably make the video on Patreon and then go live after. But I'll let you know. I promise you, you thought I was holding out on you. No, um, I didn't. I was teasing. No, no, no. I'll let you I know. Did. Well, with, <laughs> with whatever comes in when it does and um we can all you know there should be an option where we each can go live from our channels but stick it together so we all get the views like a, you can do that server. can you do that where we all are in one solid video but we it's on each of our channels yeah do so you stream with Streamyard? no but i want i should see Streamyard allows simulcasting but like we yeah. could do that through Streamyard. oh so you just push a button and it connects to your channel. All right. I don't think I'll have that set up today, but I definitely need to get going with StreamYard. I use Ecamm for like all of my live content, but mm, um, I don't know what that is. I don't Ecamm know if it has is, is good for Mac. Um, it's only on Mac, but it's what I use to to like lock. I, I basically have this device here that lets me go to different scenes so I can shoot oh, I see. live. Uh, MG, do you does the person who wants to do the simulcast have to have StreamYard too? Does it have to be two StreamYards, or can he? Did you see Dave when you came in here? Was there an option for you to hit to to stream to your channel? I don't know. Oh, it's, it does say stream this to your audience. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's it. How you do it. So if you're connected through my StreamYard to your YouTube, I think you can do it. You, you want know to test what? It? We should do this. Um, Cause I I'm already ready. It's like, I'm going to go make a video before like a pre breaking news video, but we should do this in, in the coming days because I'd, I've wanted to have you on my channel to talk about the hail case, mm -hmm. but I've just been so overwhelmed. So I thought it would be good to have you on. So you could just like, tell me all of the things. About oh yeah. It. We should totally do it. That would be fun. Maybe we could do that tomorrow. Are you free tomorrow? No, I have, I have a 9 right. a.m. Uh, Larry and I are doing a stream. We're going to be doing a stream on uh, hearing number five in the Hales case. So it's probably going to be a couple hours. Okay. But after I might be after that. Okay. I mean, what time are you talking about? Whenever. All right. Well, why we'll don't talk. what email me? We'll, we'll we'll talk about it. All right. Well, I'll I'll text you or email you if I get any news. I might have to um I might have to put my tight pants on for this story because um, <laughs> you're going to have to. You need to force all the rage up upwards. Yeah, it's been forced, baby. But I'm not. I'm not. I don't know. It's got what it is. But I, I'm. I'm banking on it being definitely this. The news of the week. My. I found this out. My conversation with Caitlin Bristow's Off the Vine podcast is going to air on Tuesday. That's going to be a two part conversation Ooh, where I so just, it is happening. Okay. Go oh ahead, yeah, go and ahead. I'm very excited because it's a much larger audience. I mean, I think she's got like millions of audience. You know, big audience. So. I'm excited for that. And also tell your audience, I have a new date in Nashville on April 14th. It's going to be my last stand-up show. I'm bringing my pregnant wife. We're going to try to induce labor with the forces of laughter. And so if anyone's in the Nashville area, that, and then of course, March 28th, I'll be with Clayton at the Improv in Phoenix. We should definitely figure out this um, simulcasting by June 10th. For sure. Oh, for have. sure. I've been looking into buying a mobile battery so I can like stream all day long from the courthouse. So I'm still trying to figure out. Ooh. I might have a gas okay, generator. Well, I might just. You know what? Like a... They have the, <laughs> the solar generators that are just giant battery lithium packs that you can carry around. You know, I've looked most most that I've looked into are so residential. They're like, you can play AM radio for 20 hours. And I'm like, can I stream to the world? Like, I need to make sure. It's and you want to do this from outside. Yeah, I want to be outside all day long. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to consult with Recovery Addict because he's my media guru. He knows how to do all of these things and I'll find out what you need to buy to do that. Yeah, I'm going to yep. hire and have a few people helping me. I'm going to have my mic flags up. I'm going to be grabbing interviews. I'm just going to if I take a break, we're just going to stay live and I'm just going to, you know, maybe I'll have the lawn chair. The, I'll definitely have the sunblock on the gams. I'm going to have the short you're shorts. You're going to have to be having the short shorts. I mean, that's a must. Yeah, so must in Arizona and you're going to be outside. Make sure you you bring an umbrella. Totally. You're going to need an umbrella because uh, it is very, very hot there. I don't know if you know how hot it is, but it is hot I mean, as hell. I play, in base, I play in a men's baseball league and I had a game there in October. I, I'm not shitting you. It was 111 on the air. The field temperature was so hot. You couldn't even, you couldn't even sit down to stretch your quads. It mm. was 
in people were dropping like flies. I've never been more ready to live stream. I I'm more worried that the cameras are going to overheat than I will. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, That's why you need shade. You need a tent. You, you got to have a tent. You know what? I'll check with my sister and see if she has one that we can use. She might have a backyard, uh, like a tent. There you so, go. So I just posted in the private chat, um, the, the kind of device that you're going to need. The other option oh, is Brad already you, knows you can get those mini Honda generators that people take to tailgates. They're really quiet. And you could just use that. Here we yeah. go. She's twelve hundred dollars. No, you're right. This is this is the real deal. Um, all right. Well, why not? It could power a fridge for eighteen hours. But wow. can it power a court case? No, yes. yeah, I, no, that yeah. If it can do a fridge, it can do it. Maybe I'll bring a fridge. <laughs> I'll cold you, can plug in a, you can plug in a. You're going to need the cool drinks. You're going to need the cool drinks. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I'm sorry. Breaking news, everybody. Uh, I have just received the document that we are waiting for in the Laura Eckert. No, Laura Owens v. Eckert case. I've got it. All right. I got to go and read this. I'm going to go do this on my end. All Ooh. right. Thank See you, you guys so much. Have a good one. We'll talk to you later. Awesome. Bye, Dave. All right, guys. Here we go. Uh-oh. Here ready. it is. This is for real serious. Here we go. Breaking news. It's happening right now. Gather around, everybody. Get your drinks. Get your popcorn. Because the motion to compel is here. Now, let me look at it quickly because I'm not sure. It's it probably. Uh, I'm looking. Hold, please. Well, I mean, I'm imagining that this is the one that was released. It is the one that was released. And so it must be redacted as of the court orders. So let me just check real quick. I mean, does it have her name or is it blocked out? Uh, well, her name shouldn't be redacted. Shouldn't be, but. That I don't care about. I just want to make sure there are no phone numbers, addresses, things that would make YouTube upset. This is a 33 page document, folks. We're going to be in it for a while. Ooh. So put your feet up, put your feet up. And there are exhibits. Oh, oh yes, there yes. are. There are exhibits. Let me just go over those quickly while we are. Hey, Brad, do me a yes, favor. Sir. While I am looking to see if there's anything here that needs to be redacted, why don't you start reading these super chats? You can pull them up and start reading them. All righty. So we've got um, Megan Fox. You are so very smart and very pretty. Love you. Thank you. Well, that's Rod. fantastic. Thank you. Um, we had Nicholas Starro earlier said my hair looks amazing. So I think he may have used the bonnet. Oh, I knew it. I knew it, Nick. I knew I was waiting for you to take it off. You didn't take it off on the stream last night. And when you woke up, I was wondering how it would how it would look. Did you film it when you took it off to see? Did you have to do anything to it? Did you have to eat? It? So Nicholas was drunk ordering and he got himself the satin bonnet from oh, Amazon no. or wherever. And he put it on and he looks like a boss in it. Like we thought he was going to look silly in it. Mm -hmm. No, no. Nick couldn't look silly in anything because he's he's like, you know. Santa Laws and he looks awesome and everything. <laughs> and he put this silk bonnet on and he looked like a freaking pirate or Dumbledore or something mm -hmm. really cool like that. Right. Like he looked, he looks amazing in it. Then I see the next day he still got it on. He's on MG stream last night. And he's like, I'm just, I, he goes, it's so comfortable. I haven't wanted to take it off. So <laughs> this is one of the best pieces of advice I've ever given in my whole damn life to someone. Cool. So that was a uh, half hour ago. So if he's still around, we'll uh, keep, uh, taking a look at it. Uh, Airdrie, thank you for becoming a YouTube member. Welcome to the Fox Den. Uh, Pepper and C. Oh, whenever Fox I hear Den. You need your sound, the sound. There we yeah. go. Whenever I hear the name Brad, the Rocky Horror Picture Show comes to mind. I've not actually seen Rocky Horror Picture Show, so... It's way better to see it live than it is uh, on the... Well, when I say live, I mean go to like a midnight showing when there's like where there's people when everyone's there and dancing yeah. in the middle of the uh-huh you know. it's way better to do it that way than to just sit if you watch it at home you're going to be like what the hell is this this is yeah. the dumbest thing i've ever seen tracy fagan thank you for the five dollar super chat brad is this on your channel i'm a space nerd and want more it is not on my channel because my channel barely exists as it um uh, as it stands right now because i have no idea what i want to put on my channel so uh, if, if people enjoy, uh, space content, then I can be, uh, 
I can see that to do a little bit more. However, I would say that there are much better space channels um, that that would be able to cover it. One is Everyday Astronaut. He's a he lives in Minnesota or Wisconsin. Um, NASA Space Flight does twenty four seven cameras of both um, Kennedy Space Center and Starbase Texas. Uh, so you can check them out uh, all the time. Uh, to see what's going on at those uh, various uh, space launch ports, but I'll take the advice. Thank you. Uh, St. Dodo, thank you for the 199 super chat. Dave, save some sexy for the rest of us. You know, he he, he just uh, he just exudes it, and uh, until we save can bottle it up and sell it. Save some sexy for the rest of us. That's a great comment. Who said that? St. Dodo. Saint Dodo. Um, uh, okay, Brad, quick mm -hmm. question. I have found something that I need to redact. Yep. Can I do it on Foxit? You should be able to. I see a highlight option, but I don't see a blackout option. It, I think there's a redact button. Um, All right, let me see. Oh, drawing. There's drawing. Okay. Um, or edit. or stamp. There's a stamp. Can I do it? Can I use one of these stamps? Maybe. Let's see. Oh yeah, I can. I oh yeah, that'll work. That'll actually work. This is great. Okay. So, all right. Continue. Yep. Uh, we did that one. Jill M's, uh, thank you for the $5 Australian off topic with all the name Lynette's go by. It's hard to follow the papal trail. Much love from Western Australia. Well, thank you for staying up and uh, watching us. And Julie O, thank you for the $5 super chat. Megan, did you see Dave is missing? I tagged you on Twatter. I, I saw there's some poor guy with the name Dave Neal who's missing. I just, oh, that was, that just kind of made me sad. So I don't know. I, is he, I hope he's okay. It's not our Dave Neal though. Yeah. We, we just saw him. So he, we got he's not missing. Life. All right. So that's all the super chats while she's uh, going through those um, redactions. Let's bring it back to some space stuff. Cause I, I, I'm telling you guys, seeing this stuff um, was just incredible. And um, you don't get to see um, many rocket launches like this. So um, this is uh, during the ascent from the launch earlier today. Megan, it's spinning. What's spinning? My share. Your chair? My spit. No, my, my oh, chair. Oh, your chair. I don't know why that's happening. Why is that happening? Good question. It's not my fault. It's on your end. I know. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, remember to unstar the super chats as you as you read them so that they're not still in there. Oh, that's weird. They're still up on my. They're they're starred in in my thing, so I have to unstar them. I guess. Okay. That's weird. So you can unstar them, but they don't come off of mine. That's yeah. Weird. So this would be, um, as you can see in this graphic down here on the bottom left, um, the circles that are white are engines that are currently lit, and the ones that are um, black in the center are engines that are off. So it's currently shutting down the engines in preparation for hot staging. Loose back burn setting it up for eventual splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. Stay separation. Back burn. So it's pretty cool. So uh, on the um, to the right of that lower flap on the starship, you can actually see the um, vapor trail that was left from the engines as it uh, ascended um, out of Brownsville, Texas, going um, east southeast. And then as it um, progresses into this, you see the gases uh, from the engine startup. Um, Right here, there's three engines that are uh, called vacuum optimized engines, engines that are designed to work in the vacuum of space. Um, they, those engines light up and then they light the center engines there after that. And then the clamps that are holding the two vehicles together release and you um, see it detach and then the booster starts to uh, dip away. And then the... Um, the booster relights its engines to do what's known as a boost back burn um, to get it um, back to where they want it to be. The goal of this um, program is they want 
this entire launch vehicle to be completely and 100 percent reusable which is a feat that's really um hasn't been met by anyone in uh rocketry at the moment um sir adams no i do not work for spacex it would be really cool if i did but i'm just an amateur um enthusiast so um in Starship's development program right now, uh, all of the vehicles are expended. There's no uh, intention to uh, recover them right now, but they um, they are going to use um, Starship to assist in the Artemis program. Uh, so w the goal is they want to um, send up a human variant of Starship um, to orbit the Earth, and then they need to have depots uh, in space to be able to fill um, with cryogenic propellants, um, liquids that are um, at a very cold temperature. Uh, I think it's what, minus 236 for liquid oxygen and 240 for methane, uh, which are the propellants that are used on Starship. And they're, um, it's gonna take something, I think they said, um, possibly up to 16 flights in order to fill the depot. But what they want to do is um, get the uh, depot full, transfer that um, cryogenic propellant over to the human landing system, uh, and then uh, that's going to go off to the moon and dock with a um, space station that they want to put into a what's known as a halo rectilinear orbit. Uh, in Recto what? It's... Yeah, it's called that, a halo uh, rectilinear I check, orbit. I check right back in at, when he's talking about rectums or something, and I, no. I just think you know. Um, phrasing. I'm ready. I'm ready, Brad. Okay, well, I'll stop talking, nerd. <laughs> stop your nerd talk for a minute. All right, folks. Now, I just want to put out this disclaimer. I have redacted everything that I think I have found. There is no intention to put anything out there that sh that should have been redacted that I missed. Uh, sometimes things get missed, but this should be a public document. I'm not that worried about there being much in there. I just went through it twice. I've redacted a couple addresses that I saw and some email addresses, um, but I haven't seen anything else that really stuck out that should be redacted. Should I have overlooked something? Uh, it was purely unintentional and we will just uh, move past it. Okay. All right, here we go. Yeah, rectilinear and halo orbit. That's what it's called. Easy for you to say. All right. In the Superior Court of the State of Arizona, in and for the County of Maricopa, in the matter of Laura Owens, petitioner and Clayton Eckert, respondent, this is a motion to compel assigned to the Honorable Julie Mata. Respondent Clayton Eckert, by and through counsel, undersigned and pursuant to Rule 65A2, Arizona Rules of Family Law Procedure, ARLFP, hereby moves this court. Oh, you know what? Hold on. I forgot to tell someone something. I have to tell my source that I got something. Hold on. I... All right. All right. Moves this court to compel petitioner's disclosure and enter appropriate sanctions for her non-compliance. So this is also a motion for sanctions. Holy crap. At petitioner's Rule 57 deposition on March 1st. Oh boy, we're going to get deposition uh, uh, by motion. Deposition stuff. Yeah, deposition by motion. Petitioner testified. One, she altered an ultrasound image falsely claiming they came from Southwest Medical Imaging. Two, she miscarried two, two, two hand-sized fetuses sometime in September, October. I'm sorry. No. What? You are fake news. I'm sorry. What? Bullshit. She miscarried two hand-sized fetuses. Some Hand-sized, folks. Hand-sized. Yeah, hand-sized. Not... not Full All right, hand. still, I, yeah. still, hand-sized. That's pretty big. Hand-sized fetuses sometime in September, October. Uh, uh, the footnote here says, to be clear, this motion to compel in no way implies that petitioner's multiple prior attorneys or her current counsel knew that they were using falsified tampered medical evidence. 
very well, critical to Corey not getting uh, his bar license removed. That's magnanimous of him. <sighs> and was seen by yet to be named telehealth providers. What? 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 That was well, the um, neurologist that they mentioned. Well, or or this this says yet to be named, so that wouldn't be the neurologist because he named the neurologist. So yet to be named by telehealth providers, but provided no records regarding the same, nor confirmation of the date of the alleged event. Number three, when she miscarried, she took photos of what would have been of no. 19 to 20 week twin fetuses, but she no longer had the photos which she claimed she sent to her sister no. because she had gotten a new phone. I'm going to need a minute to digest this. Bullshit. She sent photos supposedly of these fetuses that went to her sister. So if her sister still has the photos, they would still be there. So just so, so communication is two way. You've got the sender's phone and then you've got the receiver's phone. So if you, and everything is on the cloud. Everything, even if you delete the photos, it's still on the cloud. It's always on the cloud. But of course, you know, to subpoena those records, that's that's a lot. There's no way this happened. Sorry, this is all garbage. The, the pictures don't exist because they the babies don't exist. This is all false. And if YouTube moder uh, you know, the YouTube people or the AI that is scanning these cha this channel for demonetizing, we are speaking strictly of a fake hypothetical pregnancy because it didn't happen. This is not a real miscarriage story. And I want to apologize to everyone out there, all the women out there who have experienced miscarriage, because this is a slap in the face. This woman is to mothers what people who pretend to be Marines are to Marines. This is stolen valor of motherhood and it and oh th this is ridiculous because she's gotten a new phone she no longer has the pictures and four there is a fourth case in california where someone alleged that petitioner fabricated a pregnancy and that's the one that dave neal said that he doesn't he knows who the person is but they uh wish to remain anonymous at this right. point i don't know who they are i know about that i know about them and i know some peripheral people who may know them but I'm, I'm not at liberty to say anything about that at this point. I don't have confirmation and I've reached out as much as I could, but I, there's no confirmation. But can I just say, if that man or people who know him are listening to this right now, can I just give you my argument for why you should come forward? I, I really feel like this is important. There are so many victims here who do not have the resources that you do because of your status and who you are. They don't have those resources. And some of them have spent over $100,000 in court that they couldn't afford that will impact them for their life, their entire lives and impact their children for their entire lives because of this woman. And you were fortunate enough to have been able to afford to fight her off. And a lot of these guys were not. And their lives have been, a lot of them destroyed. Michael Maricini was accused horrifically of public domestic violence claims. Uh, so I just want to encourage you that are out there, any other victims, including this one in particular, to make a statement, come forward, because it, your presence in this will lend, it'll be the nail in the coffin. It just will be. Say it. Come out and say it. There's no amount of you know, embarrassment for being a, a victim here that, that makes any sense. There's no embarrassment. Clearly, many men have been taken in by this woman. No one is going to be saying, oh, what an idiot. No one's going to be doing that. But you could do a good deed by coming out and supporting these other victims by giving, uh, you know, legitimacy to their stories, by, by putting the final nail in this coffin. And I, I have understood i think the only thing i can say is that the person that she did this to the one who doesn't want to come forward um is somebody everybody will know yeah so please come forward and please please because this is the thing that will do it
And we're not asking you to come forward because we want to invade your privacy. We're not trying to, we're not trying to write any hit pieces on you or anything. And we'll leave you alone as soon as you make your statement. Like just make it though. Come out and tell people what this woman did. <sighs> Compulsive lying is not a defense to disclosure production. God, I love you, Greg. Mm. Greg Woodnick, I love him so much. Where's my new button? <laughs> Perfect. Petitioner's increasingly apocryphal tales include her telling U.S. Weekly just last week that her pregnancy was confirmed at an urgent care. Again, HCG tests are not confirmation of pregnancy. While the loss of a pregnancy is a tragedy, the loss of a fake pregnancy is not. Here, petitioner was photographed competing in horse jumping competitions with a flat stomach weeks before she appeared in court before Judge Galketsis with a seemingly large pregnancy stomach moon belly, claiming she was 100% and 24 weeks pregnant by Clayton, who she never had sexual intercourse with. Yeah. Um, Colorado Canadian, thank you for the $5 super chat. Um, so she, she took these photos, but then she went into these hearings saying that she was still pregnant. Yeah. It's on November 3rd. So she took, she had this thing happen to her in September or October, took photos. And then on November 2nd or whatever day it was in November, she lied to the judge and said, I am a hundred percent pregnant with 24 week old twins. hundred percent. She said. Yeah. So if, and this, this goes back of perjury. This, this goes back even further and says, she said um, at the status hearing, uh, Corey said on her behalf that she didn't know that she w miscarried and she had to go to an OB in order to prove that she or that OB had to say that she was um, miscarried. And mm -hmm. it's like, oh, well, she miscarried a month or two prior. And I have experts that can testify to the fact that this happens to women all the time. And it, it's so much bullshit that um, she's just spewing out of her mouth at this point. And it, the funny thing is, is every time in that status hearing that Greg Woodnick said, she's a liar and we can prove it. She got furious and mm -hmm. it's only going to bite her is even more so in about this. It's so mm -hmm. frustrating all right, I'm I'm posting. I had to post something on Twitter to make sure people know I'm actually reading this document right now, yeah. guys. If you can, you share. You should share this stream so people get in here. Share it on Reddit. Make sure you tell Reddit I'm reading it right now. Our justice um, for Clayton post there. Yeah. Uh, okay. This is this is unbelievable. This is. This is unbelievable, you guys. And, and a very good point, Colorado Canadian. Thank you for bringing that up because this is verification. It's it's proof of perjury. It's proof of fraud on the court right there. If she really said in a deposition that she had this miscarriage, she took photographs of fetuses. And in September or October, weird how she doesn't have a date for that. Wouldn't you have a date? Wouldn't you know when it I'd happened? I'd subpoena the phone company and say, I want all text messages sent from this number to this number. And then um, you you could um, get it. You know, BS, I know. I, I understand. This is, I feel this way about her too. Right to jail, right away. But but the, what what is the, where, what do you charge her with? You know, and, and how do you find a prosecutor in Phoenix of all places where there's bad shit going on all the time like really bad shit going on in phoenix there are murders there's gang violence there's cartel there's all sorts of things going on in phoenix right now that prosecutors are, are going to be like what, what we don't we, we don't care about this small time con artist what is she we're, we're going to go at we're going to spend our the state's money on prosecuting this this woman no they're not and they're, they're just not and so we this is why i keep saying and why i've said from the beginning of this that the only time um wait hold on what's going on in locals lens what's happening hmm? uh lens hold on lens is having a problem with locals i just want to check in yeah so it it's so odd that 
And we're glad that we're getting this information out because it's so crazy. The kinds of things that she would admit in a deposition. Well, she kind of has to because if she do, if she lies in the deposition, then it's going to um, prove doubly bad for her. Uh, and obviously, we're seeing that there is like so much ridiculousness going on already. We're not even a page into this 33 page document and we've already got absolute nonsense. This is so crazy. But we're again, like I was saying, we're not going to find a prosecutor who's going to be interested in this case in Phoenix. I mean, maybe in a small town where there's not a lot going on, it might be reasonable, right? I, but in Phoenix, you guys just have to know what it's like there. There's a high crime rate. There's just a lot of stuff going on. Uh, a thousand of you are here in the chat. Only 500, 597 have hit that like button. Don't forget to do that. Hit that like button. And again, a word about Super Chats. Uh, those of you who are sending them, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate every Super Chat. It does help me see your comments when they come in uh, because it is tough to see them when the chat is flying so fast. If you guys want me to slow down the chat, Please let me know. I haven't actually done that today. I think it's I, okay nope. right now. Okay. So if, if it does become a problem, just let me know and I will slow it down. But again, if you cannot afford to send a super chat, I just want you to know, I appreciate that you're here and that you can hit that like button. You can hit my, you can click on my articles. You can subscribe to the channel. That's a great way to, to support the show. I never want you to feel like you're being pressured as much as I joke about shaming you guys. I don't want you to feel pressured to send a super chat ever. If you are on a fixed income, I want you here. I, I This is free content and the people who can afford it, um, they support me and they're, they're sending, they send super chats all the time. And I love you guys too. I love you all. And I just don't want you to feel pressured in any way. Uh, that said, if you do have the money and you are not sending super chats today, How what the you? hell? How dare you? I have this first, I have, this is breaking news, man. This is, we've, we've got it before anybody else. We're getting it out there before anybody else. We are breaking this news. So, you know, a little super, super thanks would be great. I'd appreciate it. Well, Megan, we can always talk about hair while we've got this document here and waiting. <laughs> that is true. You know what? It's interesting you should say that uh, because I had a wa I did wash day yesterday, mm -hmm. and I for the first time my conditioner co wash it didn't seem to work so well. I had to actually do shampoo too, which was weird. Maybe I just went too long without a wash. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. How are you well, doing with the uh, with the not shampooing every? every day I, it's it's doing really well i'm um the problem Feeling is better is, less so, flaky so i've so the stuff that i got is dr squatch have you seen any of their commercials yes it's the i, I got the pine tar for um shampoo and conditioner and i uh -huh. run around the uh house and i'm smelling campfire everywhere i go <laughs> because of this uh smell in my hair and i think there was a couple of days where i forgot to wash out the conditioner so then it's extra smelly and I'm just like, I'm smelling this everywhere that I'm going. But um, does it smell good? It smells like that would smell good. I mean, I, I feel mean, like that sounds like it would smell good. It smells OK, but I am um, they have one. They had a verbal bourbon barrel one and I uh, I got that for body soap. So I'm going to try that one. But I didn't want to. Oh, I have that. We have the bourbon barrel one. It's It smells really good. Yeah. So I, um, they finally put it in Myers. So I'm. Um, able to buy it without having to feel pressured into going onto their website and not get it with, before smelling it or whatnot. <laughs> my son, uh, so my husband, he gives him the soap to use, you know, the, the big man, the, he just recently started taking showers by himself. Like he can mm -hmm. actually wash his own hair without help. And uh, so he uses his dad's soap, which smells like all, you know, it's all the same stuff as you're talking mm. about and some other and there's another Ooh, brand that we broken use baker it just smells joined. really good oh hey broken baker thanks for the raid appreciate that we're going over some breaking news here i'm just shaming the chat for a minute uh to get some more super chats at the moment uh but I, my son has the does this thing now where every time he comes out of the shower he's like smell me mom smell my hair it smells really good I'm like, okay, come over here. I'll smell your hair. Wow, you smell good. Yeah, he loves that so much. So funny. All right, did we put this one up on the screen, Colleen's? I can't grab Colleen's super chat. What is going on with my super chats? I have here. I got it. Oh, you got it. Okay. Yeah. 
Colleen, thank you for the super chat. It says, LOL, I'm shamed. Thank you. I appreciate that. But make sure you hit that like button. We're up to 700 likes with a thousand of you here. We should, we should uh, have more than that. Keep hitting that like button. I know your thumbs aren't broken, so you have no excuse. All right, let's get back to it. Ah, St. Dodo. Thanks to the Super Chat says, for those who have experienced infant loss and miscarriage, your loss and grief are real. She exploited something that is beyond sacred. Justice is coming to Laura Owens and her mother. Trust that. Well, karma is certainly coming. I mean, I can't imagine that you put this, that you put this out into the universe and it doesn't come back on you. It does. It will. I don't know how, but it will. All right. I skipped your super chat. Sarah, for some reason, nothing is getting, are you unstarring things before I put them on the screen? There we go. Sarah, keep her with the horses behind an invisible fence. Thank you for the super chat. I'm not, the super chats are not getting starred all of a sudden. I don't know why. And it's, oh wait, maybe it's something to do with, uh, that, that's really weird. All of a sudden it's like StreamYard is broken and oh. Do you want to refresh? Uh, yeah, maybe I should try that because it's weird that it's not. All right, hold on. If Mary did it, so can she. Immaculate conception. All right, I'm going to refresh my screen. I'll be right back. Yep. And then Colorado Canadian, we already got you. Uh, and Jojo, we right. sending a PayPal. So oh, it's now and now it works. Ta-da. Ta-da. Brad, you're so smart. Sending I, I, darn it. Speaking of PayPal, if you guys would prefer to send uh, PayPal or Cash App or Venmo, we do have those. Uh, let me put that banner up. Breaking news in fetal attraction case. There we go. And scroll. All right. Let me share that uh, document again. And we will continue. Thank you for all the likes. It looks like the likes are working. Uh, we're getting up there. We're almost at 800. Uh, make sure you subscribe as well. I'm on the way to 50,000 subscribers. I'm so excited about that. I can't Hooray. even. I never even saw that coming. I didn't even. I don't know. Like, I, I didn't even see it coming, especially not this year. I don't know why, but I just, I didn't see it coming. All right. Here we go. Do, 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 do. We. Uh, Petitioner was photographed competing. Yes, Corp Force and Large Moon Bell claiming she was 100% and 24 weeks pregnant by Clayton, who she never had sexual intercourse with. Notably, of the litany, 14 plus providers' names given through Petitioner's testimony prior to her deposition, multiple providers have denied providing care or ever seeing communication with the petitioner. Exhibit one. Oof. Uh, Danielle, thanks for the Venmo. Appreciate that. Uh, is there a message? Oh, it says LO is going down. I don't think the judge is going to be real happy about this uh, information she's getting. I don't think so. And and the fact the, that we, the I fact found that out we, that the judge is a mom also. Well, the fact that we have a woman as a judge is really going to sink Laura because there's no way if this was a man, he'd be, he'd be like, eh, I don't really care. But having a mom who may, we don't know, may have had a miscarriage in the past. It's going to make it so much more personal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't know if what her uh, pregnancy history is. I know that judge Mata is a mom and she may have had experience with miscarriage either herself or someone in her family. And uh, I don't think that she's going to have any, any shits to give on what Laura has done here. So, and, and she so far has been such a good judge. I, it's been a pleasure watching her and uh, I, I can't wait to see what she does here. Uh, moreover, petitioner lied about obtaining, you can just hear Greg saying <laughs> petitioner lied about, I wish I had that on, on my, on my board. One. I need, I need to get that. Um, lied about obtaining obstetric care because sonograms taken by actual sonographers, sonographers, Sonographer. cannot, sonographers cannot be easily faked, nor can fetal anatomy scans or the frequent checkup appointments one would expect to have for her proclaimed high-risk twin pregnancy. 
I used to work for a nonprofit um, training center uh, out in Maryland, and they owned a sonography school. So we would have to go over there and support their computers every now and again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Undersigned counsel has sent petitioners current counsel reminders that this data needs to be immediately disclosed per Rule 49, which petitioner evaded for eight months. Council has not only received no response, but no response to efforts to meet and discuss consistent with Rule 9C. Nevertheless, Rule 9C has been complied with. As and for his motion to compel, responded states as follows. One, on August 1st, 2023, petitioner initiated the underlying action when she filed her petition to establish paternity, legal decision making, parenting time, and child support, alleging that she was pregnant with respondent's twins. On August 21st, 2023, respondent filed his answer, denying that petitioner could scientifically be pregnant with his twins after they engaged in oral sex on May 20th, 2023. On September 28th, 2023, the parties attended an early resolution conference and entered into a Rule 69 agreement stating petitioner agrees to contribute a sample on October 2, 2023, to determine paternity of the alleged pregnancy. On October 6, 2023, petitioner filed for an order of protection against respondent, granted by Judge Duty. Judge Duty? No, oh, God, no. Crazy. Oh, that's terrible. That's what she said. That's no, that's no good. No, no. Wrong. If I were Judge Duty, I would change my name. It's not even do T with a T. It's D-O-O-D-Y. Just like poop. Mm-hmm. Oh, that judge could just change her name or his name. Change your name, Judge Duty. That's just awful. I can't even. <laughs> All right. Um, on October 6th, oh, we already said that, alleging that she was pregnant by him and that he was cyberbullying her. Oh. I have anxiety over the roof. <laughs> You are not a nice person. <laughs> on October, all right, on October eighteenth, twenty twenty-three, petitioner filed a request for a pre-decree med mediation, which was denied. Denied. Sit down. November twenty-two, twenty twenty-three, alleging respondent would not speak to her, and he even acts as if the unborn children don't exist, despite a preponderance of evidence. <laughs> Proponderous of evidence is a what she's saying. A, a proponderous of evidence. Shame. Uh, Shame. Laura, Shame. please stop using Chad GPT to write legal documents. Please, I beg you. Oh, MG, MG Law, thank you for the clips, by the way. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, the Turtle Queen clips. I appreciate that. Um, on October 24, 2023, petitioner appeared on video in a court proceeding before Judge Kel Ketsis wearing what appeared to be a, a fake pregnant stomach moon belly. I have to take a screenshot of this preponderance of evity and send it to bad legal arguments on Twitter because it's hilarious. It's very funny. I have to put that. I got to post that on Twitter. It's, it's yeah. funny. On November 2, 2023, in the second day of trial on respondents granted injunction against harassment against petitioner, she testified under oath that she was 100% and 24 weeks pregnant by respondent and that she was due February 14th, 2024. Valentine's Day. Yeah, Valentine's Day. Cupid's twins, as Dave as Dave uh, often points out, Cupid's twins were alleged to have been to be born on Valentine's Day. Petitioner further testified that she was having a high risk pregnancy Bullshit. <laughs> due to her alleged epilepsy and that she was being seen by Dr. McCool and Dr. Higley and that she had an appointment with Dr. Higley last Friday. Petitioner willfully and wantonly refused to comply with any disclosure or discovery rules, forcing respondent to file the following. A notice of non-appearance at deposition, 
response objection to petitioner's motion for confidentiality and preliminary protective order, reply to petitioner's response to motion for sanctions pursuant to Rule 26, and an amended response to petition to establish paternity. Four more motions. How much money do you think those cost? 10, 15, 20,000. A lot. A lot. Number nine, it was not until the status conference before the court on February 21st, 2024, that petitioner agreed to sign a basic HIPAA release to allow respondent to obtain the documents himself and in compliance with Rule 2, which petitioner invoked. Of note, petitioner apparently mistaken signed the HIPAA release in open court with the wrong year. <gasps> Causing mm. numerous providers to reject the HIPAA release as expired. Oh, she did that on purpose. Oof. That's like signing it Daffy Duck, you know, like just a scribble, like it's mm -hmm. not really your name. That's terrible. That's terrible. To give her a little bit of credit for like six weeks after the new year, I still put stuff as 2023 because I forget. But Brad, stop ugh. giving her stop stop giving her an excuse. Nobody cares. We know she did that on purpose. Yeah. There's no way that wasn't on purpose. Number 10. But the six, thing is, is oh. during the status hearing, the judge even said, I will sign off on it to show that it's completely valid, mm -hmm. which means that all of those dates would have been or should have said 2024 as well. Oh my God, it's terrible. This is this is just all terrible. Since the status conference, respondent has received confirmation from nearly all providers that petitioner was never a patient of theirs. Notably, the HIPAA releases for Dr. McCool revealed that petitioner had never attended an appointment at his office. So Reddit was correct. Reddit said that anyone could go and make an online appointment with Dr. McCool. And she responded to that and said, oh, that's not true. And I'm a high rate. I have to have a, a referral and, and it's not true. And, and I had to be verified and blah, blah, blah. So Reddit was correct. Laura was lying. Anyone can make an appointment, which is what she did. And then she didn't go. Despite her testimony before Judge Galketsis and the appointment confirmation email that she submitted as evidence in the injunction matter. So she used the, uh, the online, uh, like, what do they call it? Automatic. Yeah, the, appointment the confirmation. confirmation email mm -hmm. as evidence. Days prior to petitioner's deposition, petitioner sent respondents counsel a letter excluding Oof. her own attorney, blatantly seeking to extort respondent into dismissing this action. Damn! Or she would file a baseless, incoherent, and legally unsupported lawsuit for $1.4 million. Damn! I love you, Greg. I love Greg Woodnick. He has such a way with words. This is a wonderful sentence. Mm -hmm. Blatantly seeking to extort respondent into dismissing this action or she would file a baseless, incoherent, and legally unsupported lawsuit for $1.4 million. Exhibit 2. If respondent agreed to sign, the judge is not going to like this. Oh, if yeah. respondent agreed to sign a stipulation to dismiss this action and to manually agree to forbear, mutually. mutually, sorry, mutually agree to forbear from any future legal actions by February 29th, 2024, the day before her de deposition, she would not pursue the fake legal claim. More bizarrely, at the deposition of petitioner on March 1st, 2024, petitioner confirmed she had never received obstetric care for her high-risk pregnancy with tonsil twins and denied being the owner of the sonograms petitioner posted on Reddit and or provided to various journalists at the beginning of this case. She doctored a sonogram to attribute it to Southwest Medical Imaging, SMIL, and added her name and birth date, which was previously an exhibit in a court proceeding. She did this, according to her testimony, because she had initially gotten the sonogram anonymously at Planned Parenthood, Mission Viejo Health Center in California, and she did not want respondent to know where she had gone for the sonogram, but somehow she was fine with him thinking she had gotten it at Smile. Unsurprisingly, Planned Parenthood, Mission Viejo, has confirmed that they do not offer anonymous appointments, and they have an easily accessible patient portal. Yeah, that would be illegal. Mm -hmm. they're, not, they're not seeing people who don't give them their identification. 
No records from Planned Parenthood Mission Viejo have been disclosed despite repeated requests. According to petitioner, the only individual who told her she was having boy and girl twins was a medical provider to whom she texted a six-week admittedly altered sonogram. Despite medical science and medical experts stating that a sonogram can only determine the sex of fetuses with, the accuracy, with accuracy around 18 weeks, petitioner testified that an unnamed provider was able to glean from a six-week tampered with sonogram the petitioner was pregnant with a boy and girl. This is so insane. Yeah. It, we went through the DNA <sighs> test, and that you had to be like 10 or 12 weeks in order to be able to ensure there was enough um, DNA matter to... Um, collect from the blood sample. I mean, I remember waiting, you know, impatiently for the the appointment where I would find out, you know, mm -hmm. the the sex, and it was like an interminable waiting period. And they, the very earliest they would schedule you was around eighteen weeks, but they really right. wanted you to go like around twenty one yeah. weeks. I remember, because then, then I think can, going around twenty or twenty one weeks. Yeah, twenty weeks is what they want to do because then they can do all of the um, anatomy scans, and then as long as the um, child is playing well and will sit in the proper location, they can try and move him or get him to move to, uh, in order to get the, mm -hmm. um, the wand where they need it to. It's just, uh, uh, the other thing I remember about those sonograms was having to drink a ton of water before you go in. Cause your bladder has to be totally full in order for them to, that's just a random memory I just had. I remember always being so uncomfortable <laughs> during the sonic because then they're pushing on your belly and you also have a full bladder, but you have to in order to push things out of the way for them to see clearly. Yeah. Um it's just they, another because if those... you have an empty bladder when you're doing the sonogram, you can see an empty organ that would look similar to what a uterus would right. look like. And you don't want to be scanning your bladder trying to find a baby. <laughs> and that's a baby not... in it. I'm going to get to some through these super chats and then we'll go back to the document. Cynic in chief. Thanks for the super chat says as a member of team angry astronaut, I heart space talk. Oh, nice. Well, uh, Brad, uh, you may have found your niche. I mean, who knows? Tim Swope. Thanks for the super chat says support. Well, I appreciate your support very much. And rogue mama. Thank you for being a mod. And also thank you for the super chat says only people like Laura Owens would be in this chat and not hit like subscribe <laughs> and share the stream. Don't be a Laura Owens. I, I fully out endorse. The chat. Holy I, sh I fully endorse that message. Joanne Wall, thanks to the super chat, says you deserve a million subs, Megan. You rock. Well, frankly, I hope that doesn't happen because how would I ever keep up with the chat then? Can you imagine? You have to live in permanent slow mode. Yeah, and then like I don't even know what that really does. It keeps people from being able to respond in the moment. You know, like, I don't know. I don't know they how They can't works. spam chat because there's like a 10 second um, delay. Right. So right. you post something and then you have 10 seconds wait before the next one. Okay. I'm just looking at your chats because I haven't seen the, I haven't seen the, I'm, I want to see your reactions. I'm just looking at the chats. <laughs> BS says, how in the heck did she think she was going to get away with this? Sarah she, Adams, high risk of lying. <laughs> She's done it before. That's the thing. She's, she's gotten done it. away with it before. She's gotten away with it. People haven't pressed her on it. And that's the, the one benefit is that Clayton has the resources to be able to fight her on this and prove that she's a lying scumbag. Uh, Max, and you know what? You know what we didn't what we didn't consider before we've been saying that you know she she did this to a, a semi-famous guy and so that was really her problem because he had resources but it turns out she's had a there is a famous guy in this that we don't know the unidentified yep. famous guy so she actually did this to a celebrity already and got away with it and no one ever found out about shamed it shamed him into silence shamed him into silence and he's still to this day shamed into silence and i encourage you sir to come forward come forward you you will have so much support behind you and you could do so much good in this case uh max bang says she's high risk to any man she meets mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. nope dang it it's good gone oh, i know that the check moves so fast Stacy Schmidt, she has priors. Yes, go into the fetal attraction playlist on YouTube, and um, we did a reading of Greg Gillespie's um, mm -hmm. 
text messages. And I, I haven't even finished those. I haven't even finished the Greg Gillespie files. Yeah. There are the Gillespie files that we started reading the legal action against him. There's legal action on the docket against uh, Michael Maricini. That's in there too. So we have at least two other victims. Um, there's slight differences between the cases, but not much. Uh, and one of Greg Gillespie, she sued for she said he coerced her into having an abortion and again, never provided any documentation of that alleged abortion. Um, yeah. So there are multiple men and not just those two. So the, I think at last count, there were allegedly five, at least five. There could be more than that, that there could be more. So yeah, it's crazy. I just want to know how you guys are reacting to this. Uh, just checking the, just watching the chat while I'm doing this. Make sure you hit that like button. Ooh, good question. Diana Golden says, what happened to the fetuses after the photo shoot? Well, if they were actually hers, then she disposed of them without getting a fetal death certificate or anything. So, well, But you noticed that she said between up to 19 weeks, not past. Yeah, of course. Uh, I still think, though, human disposal of human re remains or medical waste um, is, you know, there are laws about that. Um, okay, moving on. Oh, wait, there's a couple of super chats to get to. Let me get to those first. Unhung hero, I can fix her. LOL. You cannot. You keep saying that. You keep saying that, but you can't. I'm waiting for the day that unhung hero... We, we talk about somebody that he can't fix. Tracy Fagan, uh, thanks for the super chat, is the fake bump video there also? Uh, yes. Yes, yes, it should be. I watched, uh, we watched the hearing in one of the fetal attraction um, videos. I don't know which one, uh, but it's in there. Okay, Rogue Mama, avoid shaming and hair talk. Hit like, subscribe, and share. Yep, yep. All right. Uh, this alleged provider has yet to be disclosed, nor has the text exchange between petitioner and the provider ostensibly because it does not exist at the deposition. Or it's on the phone that she got rid of. <laughs> right. That she, what did, did, was it on a, did she send it to a, a farm in Kansas? Is this like the, J, did it drop into a vat of acid? Is this the J hatch defense? Remember that <laughs> defense? J hatch said that their phones were sent to a, a server farm a server farm somewhere in Kansas and, and vats of acid and stuff. I, I had yeah. no idea there were just vats of acid sitting around at Johns Hopkins, all children's, but considering how they stored their oxygen tanks, I shouldn't be surprised. This alleged, this alleged petition uh, provider has yet to be disclosed, nor has the text exchange between petitioner and the provider ostensibly because it does not exist. At the deposition, petitioner claimed she had a new phone and was unable to pull up records to confirm her increasingly ridiculous tale. Oh, Damn! I love it, Greg. On the undisclosed day of the alleged miscarriage, ambiguously sometime in either September or October, and prior to appearing in court before Judge Gel Gelketsis, one of these days, I would like to know how to pronounce that name properly. I feel like I'm doing it wrong. With a fake pregnant stomach and testifying to being 100% pregnant, petitioner claims to have passed two fetal sacs. Of course, did not go to the hospital or the doctor. Because mm -hmm. that's normal. She claims to have met with telehealth, appo with telehealth appointment with a provider who she testified was not concerned that she had miscarried. Oh, come no. on. More fake news. If you had the photo, then you would have been able to send it to the provider. And then they'd be like, oh, yeah, that's a fetal sac. Um, you need to go to the hospital because you may be internally bleeding. Well, duh. Yeah. I mean... And there could be, um, the placenta could still be inside. There could be pieces of it still inside. And if anything is left inside, you will get sepsis and die. Not you could get sepsis and die. Like if you will. don't, you will. Like if you don't, if that doesn't get expelled or removed, you will die. Imagine how many women died of, of uh, after miscarriages, you know, hundreds of years ago. Mm -hmm. before there was care to get to remove that imagine how many i mean there it, the numbers must be huge but it, does she think we're stupid this is just basic science 
you have to go get a DNC, correct? That's that's what it's called. And um, this is just, and and that's not pleasant either. This is a terrible experience that she's just making light of with these ridiculous claims. Incredibly, she testified that she had also shown the two hand-sized sacks to her mother and took a photo, which she shared with the telehealth provider and her sister. No records have been provided despite repeated requests. There is a fourth man who has accused petitioner of fabricating a pregnancy, which supports respondents' contention that faking pregnancies is either pathological or the oddest of pastimes. <laughs> petitioner initiated a paternity action out of California in 2014, Exhibit 3, regarding what is believed to be her first out of five feigned pregnancies. Petitioner was asked to comply with her disclosure of the same, Exhibit 4. Is that what you uh, redacted there? Is the information regarding the fourth? Mm, you know what? I, I would check just to Let be sure. Check. Let me check. I believe it, it was already redacted. But let me just triple check. Exhibit four, it said. Yeah. All right, here it is. Hold, please. They didn't mention him by name, so... Hmm. I'm uh, not seeing anything. No, it's redacted. It's okay. redacted. It was already done. But there were some redactions in this, and then I redacted a few other things. They missed... Um, Clayton's address and Laura's address. So I took that out. All right. We were on page six. So let me go back to page six. Yeah. And this is my, you know, my best faith effort to make sure I get through this without any uh, unredacted anything. I'm trying really hard. It is my intention to keep what needs to be redacted, redacted. In orders of the court. Right. Petitioner was asked to comply with her disclosure of the fourth man. Petitioner has willfully and wantonly failed to disclose information pursuant to Rule 49. After the status conference before this court, Petitioner provided minimal disclosure after evading any compliance with Rule 49 for over eight months. Now, Petitioner has testified to attending appointments and speaking with providers who only have access to records that are critical to support the miscarriage she allegedly had in September or October, but did not reveal to the respondent or the court until her motion for confidentiality and preliminary protective order filed January 17th, 2024. Huh. I mean, she just lied, 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 just lies, just so many lies. I really need Greg on the soundboard. She lied. Lying. She lied. I mean, that would be perfect. I need that. Respondent has complied with Rule 9C to the extent possible given petitioner's refusal to respond or communicate, Exhibit 5. As detailed in correspondence, there have been multiple meetings in person, one at the courthouse and at both depositions regarding disclosure, including the court requiring the parties to submit a list of the providers they intend to seek HIPAA records from, where petitioner notably failed to mention Planned Parenthood, Mission Viejo, telemed providers, or other providers, Exhibit 6. Petitioner continues to claim there are records in her exhausting attempts to explain away why no medical evidence supporting her fictional pregnancy exists. Number 15, respondent is entitled to his reasonable attorney's fees and costs incurred in this entire action, including filing this motion to compel. Petitioner's commitment to crafting a trail of medical evidence that cannot be verified, an anonymous appointment, a photo of miscarried fetuses that somehow disappear when you get a new iPhone, a comfort, and if it's an iPhone, they're on the cloud. 
Mm -hmm. automatically updated to the cloud. I can't even take a picture on my phone and delete it immediately without it being on the cloud. A confirmation of an appointment with a doctor she never goes to, et cetera. It is astounding. It's a good word. That petitioner keeps weaving this insane web has only caused respondent to incur more fees to show what he has always known to be true. That petitioner is a fraud who concocts fictitious pregnancies as a ruse to force men into dating her. Go fuck yourself. Mm -hmm. Go fuck yourself. Due to the significant efforts he has undertaken, respondent is entitled to his reasonable attorney's fees and costs pursuant to ARS 25-324. Wherefore, respondent respectfully requests in order to obtain the California paternity file from 2014, where she was first accused of faking a pregnancy and disclosing the same. Hey, MG Law, are you in the chat still? Yeah, he was here. Uh, can a, do you, do you want a link, by the way? If anybody wants a link, I'll send it to you. Uh, if you're, if you're uh, one of my norm, Sweet normies. true lies. That's a really um, good song. I have a question for you, MG, if you want to get in here. Uh, I My question is, can an Arizona judge request? the? Oh, the expert is here. Oh. Uh, I need a dolphin sound on my soundboard. Dang it. Where is the dolphin? Do we have dolphin sounds? I probably have dolphin sounds on the voice mod. Let's see. Community soundboard. Community sounds. Let's see. Is there a doll? I bet there's a dolphin. That's going to be his new his new uh sound whenever the expert comes up. <laughs> Can you hear that or no? I can't. All right, here. Now you will be able to hear it because I will add it to the soundboard. All right, the expert. The expert's in the chat. You want to listen to He's his leaving. good song? He's like, bye. <laughs> you, oh, you want to listen to a good song? Sweet True Lies by Beast in Black is fantastic. Sweet What? It's a song called Sweet True Lies. Oh. <laughs> MG right. was singing up, up above. And it made uh, me if think you of that guys, song. If you guys missed it uh, on MG's... I got to post it, actually, because it's so funny. Uh, there was a hilarious moment. The expert was on with MG Law last night, and um, he was being his usual incorrigible self. And his wife asked me in the chat if I wanted her to hit him, to smack him. And so we took a vote in the chat if he should be smacked. And she came in and hit him with a stick. And it is the, one of the funniest things I've ever seen. And I did get a clip of it. I got to post it on Twitter so you guys can see it. Uh, expert, you're a good sport. Um, your <laughs> your wife is hilarious. Uh, I can't believe she hit you with a stick. That the, that woman is hilarious. She's very funny. Um, all right. The expert says you've bullied him into leaving. So <laughs> he keeps on telling people that I'm a bully. It's not true. It's not true at all. No. He's the one who got you demonetized. I know it's his fault. I, the, the whole thing is it's all his fault. So you know he doesn't want to take responsibility for that though. He keeps trying to change to to he's he's fake news basically. You are fake news. <laughs> But he's entertaining. Okay. Um, MG, my question for you, if you're still here, can a Calif can an Arizona judge reach out to California and ask for, for records? I would imagine they could. I mean, there's Planned Parenthood in Arizona, I would imagine, and just say, hey, we need records from your this satellite office in California because they're probably saved in the same database. Hmm. Well, I think, though, that a California judge would be able to say no. I don't think it's something that, like, an Arizona judge can order. I think they can probably request it, but I don't think it has to be turned over. So, Because think of it this way. If, if a court wants to subpoena records from Verizon, AT&T, Apple, whatnot, even though they're based out of California, they would have to respond to those subpoenas. So what does a clinic in California have to say no against in comparison? Oh, hey, Nick. Hey. He's wearing the bonnet. You're still in the bonnet. Oh, is it, is it nighttime? Is it, is it nighttime there? No, I, it's uh, 7 p.m. here, but uh, I look good in it, so I'm wearing you do. it. 
You do look yeah. good in it. So I'm gonna start calling you the Sultan. The Sultan. <laughs> Here's the thing. My giant head does not look good in any hats or any caps of any sort. Let me show. This is a one size fits all fez. <laughs> I have a giant head. You have a giant but head. But this bonnet fits. So I'm wearing the bonnet. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so awesome. I love it. I love that your hair turned out uh, nice and soft and, and, and in good good order this morning, too. All right. So here we go. Um, so he's asking for the California paternity file. So the thing is, is that, Brad, it's from the, they're asking for the paternity file from the court, not from a provider, but from oh. the court. Okay. And paternity files, the reason why I haven't been able to track down who this person is, is because in California, the paternity file is sealed. It's it's not even, you can't even see it on the record, even if you're a lawyer. It's it's not there. Hmm. Um, and I don't really know how to get it. So if a judge can get it, that would be great. But we'll see. Uh, yeah, I think um, the judge can issue an order for the sealed document to be sent and then make the decision if it's relevant, if it's going to stay unsealed, oh. or if it's uh, then it can be unsealed. Uh, so like an uh, in-camera in hearing. In-camera in inspection. Yeah. 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 Well, that makes sense. And I, I don't know how this wouldn't be relevant. I mean, this is this is relevant to the the pro the issue. All right. And then B, they're asking for order petitioner to obtain the records if they exist from Planned Parenthood Mission Viejo Health Center. Said records should come from the provider in light of the history of doctoring records. Damn. Uh, so these are the things that he's at, he's they're trying to compel. So we want the paternity file from California 2014, the records from Planned Parenthood Mission Viejo that she says she obtained the sonogram from the or to order petitioner to provide the name of the telehealth doctor or doctors who she claims told her that she did not need to seek actual medical care or hospitalization after allegedly delivering two stillbirth fetuses prior to the October and November court hearings. Reasonable. Uh, order the petitioner to produce the images, confidential if they exist, of course. We don't want to see those. Yeah. If that mm -hmm. exists... I don't want to see it, but I don't believe they exist. Of the two I don't use this word pieces, lightly, but that would be a triggering yeah. photo. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we don't want to see or that. Or if they exist, they are probably her finding these photos online and doctoring them. Right. Right. And award respondent his reasonable attorney's fees and costs incurred incurred in filing this motion to compel consistent with the law. Order such further relief as the court deems just. All right, so now we're going to get to the exhibits. Good faith this certificate. This is just the good faith certificate verification, moving past it. Exhibit number one. All right, so this is uh, from Dr. McCool. Dear provider, or no, it's to Dr. McCool. Dear provider, attached, please find an ex executed HIPAA release regarding the potential patient of yours. Laura Owens, who also may use the alias Emily Laura Wilson. Now interesting. that's interesting with the same date of birth. This HIPAA compliant release was executed by Ms. Owens in front of Maricopa County Superior Court Judge Mata on February 21st, 2024 for use, use and cause number blah, blah, blah. You have the authority to release Ms. Owens' records from August 2020 to the present date directly to our office. The court will also be issuing a minute entry confirming your authority to release records regarding the same. Please promptly provide any and all records from that time period for any treatment services and communications provided to with Ms. Owens. This is meant to be comprehensive. Please note that this cause does involve fraud allegations against one of the parties, including medical records, doctoring, and manipulation. As such, please assure your custodian of records not only provides the full file, but if there are records that were not produced by your office, example, submitted by a party through an online portal, that they be clearly identified as such, including the submission date, so that they are not misconstrued as records prepared by your office. Inversely, if your records search confirms 
no records exist, please have your custodian of records provide the ba a basic affidavit indicating that they are the custodian of the medical records for the fa facility. A comprehensive record search was conducted and no records matching these two names with the date of birth were identified. We will be forwarding you the minute entry from the court confirming your authority under separate cover. For now, and because time is of the essence, we are asking that you expedite production of the re requisite data or confirming the absence of information and provide the same directly to our office. We appreciate your prompt attention to this matter. We will, of course, pay for copies upon presentation of invoices. This is copied to Corey Keith, her former attorney who dropped out, who is no longer her attorney. Exhibit two. number two. Uh, those are my stamps. That's how I redacted stuff. Yep. Um, subject, comprehensive legal notice of intent to sue. This was from Owens to Eckert, and I already read this on a previous stream. You guys can go and find that. That would be the extortion letter. Um, so basically, this is just for the judge to see. We've already read this. This mm -hmm. is for the judge to see that she did try to do that, extort him out of $1.4 million or uh, or have him drop the this case. Exhibit number three is an email from Greg Woodnick. We love your emails, Greg. It's, uh, we don't know who it's to. Let's see. It is my understanding that you represented Laura Owens in a paternity. Oh, oh, uh-huh. Okay. It is my understanding. This is about the California matter. It yep. is my understanding that you represented Laura Owens in a paternity claim involving Redacted in 2014. That matter involved allegations of a fabricated pregnancy with altered medical records. It is our understanding that the feigned pregnancy was perceived as a ploy for your client to coerce Redacted into a relationship. Since that case resolved in California, three additional men have claimed that they were victims of a fake pregnancy ruse by Ms. Owens. I represent Clayton Eckerd, the pending matter in Arizona. Laura is represented by my friend and colleague, Corey Keith. Ms. Owens was deposed on March 1st, 2024, at which time she was asked directly about all prior litigation. She failed to disclose this California matter, but it was during this deposition that we learned of Mr. Redacted's existence and the fact that he had also alleged that she had fabricated a pregnancy with him. We are requesting cooperation for access to the California paternity file. With Ms. Owens neglecting to mention the litigation and prior discovery delays and an upcoming trial, we need this process expedited. I'm asking you to connect with Corey Keith to coordinate production and disclosure of the California court file. Of course, we are not requesting privileged information, only the public file from your court. Although I don't know if it's public because it's not on the docket. It'd, it'd be unsealed. It'd be sealed still. Well, I'm not sure if it's actually sealed or if they just don't put it on the docket so it's not searchable. Like, I wonder if you could walk it to the court and just ask for it and get it. Somebody in San Francisco, please go do this. Will someone in San Francisco please go to the court there and ask for um, I need the any paternity record file from 2014. Laura Owens. Laura Owens, mm. 2014 yeah. paternity file, and just see if they'll it give it to be, you. I'll pay for it, it whatever be, it is. Yeah. It might be a seal as they do with juvenile court that it's not searchable. So uh, it's it's there, but you can't search for it. You have to go there and actually ask for it. Mm -hmm. And even uh, then you might uh, need a subpoena for it. Hmm. Our efforts here are about obtaining the otherwise limited access California file without the need to file a motion to compel Ms. Owens' compliance with disclosure of prior matters. Well, we Arizona, Arizona rules require that parties attempt to resolve discovery disputes before bringing them to court. This is that effort, and I certainly understand that your response may simply be that you no longer represent Ms. Owens. I need to ask as a precondition to asking the court for relief. Oh, okay, so they are, if he doesn't uh, answer or answer as that, then they will bring it to the court to get a subpoena. So they asked for it above. This is just the exhibit of them asking. <laughs> this is true. Megan loves yelling into the abyss. Hey, San Fran. Yes. Yeah, anybody in San Francisco? All right. Exhibit four. Corey. This is from Greg to Corey. It has now been a week, as it has now been a week since we deposed Laura, and we have yet to receive any disclosures from you. One, Laura claims she had an appointment with telemed providers about her alleged miscarriage. She testified she would be providing us with the provider names, and we have not received the same. 
This stymies our consulting experts who are already limited in the records they are reviewing in light of Laura claiming that the sonograms she sent to the media and Clayton are not hers. In fact, that she does not know the date of the alleged miscarriage is incredible, but could be supported if she provides records from the appointment she claims she had immediately after the alleged miscarriage, including the photo she testified she shared with the provider of the alleged two hand-sized fetuses she delivered. So, so that's, that's the other thing. So she's right there. It says she provided the image of these um, supposed fetuses to the, to the provider and the provider's like, and eh, now you're fine. Yeah. Like, it's not concerning at all. Yeah. yeah. And, and these providers uh, will have a record of it. Yeah. She won't give she, up the she, names she, she of them. Yeah. Oh, I wonder why. Mm hmm. Uh, including the photo. Laura has. She's searching she... for someone who has been out of business. Who went out of business? <laughs> MG has uh, severe Laura... weather over him, so he's uh, ducking out for a bit. MG has what? Severe weather inbound. Uh oh, so... stay safe. Okay, yeah, stay be safe. careful. Laura has uh, health insurance, so the provider should be a phone call away for confirmation. If she paid by credit card, she could just look at the statement and give us the vendor name so we can issue the subpoena. There is no excuse for the delay other than more of the same. Uh, doctors claimed that say she was not their patient in records that never existed. Um, as you saw in the supplemental discovery, more providers she claimed she was using have no records. We anticipate Planned Parenthood confirming the same. Number two, Laura lied when she said there was no other litigation she was involved in. The situation with Redacted appears to be a paternity matter in San Francisco. Those files are not public, but can be accessed by the parties. Okay, there's our answer. Her California attorney did not respond to my email, and neither did you. I am happy to ask Redacted to cooperate with the release of records. I trust Laura realizes he will confirm yet another pregnancy con from 2014 that was eerily similar to victim number four. At least we believe him to be number the fourth, Clayton. We need the alleged fetus photos. Laura said she sent them to both Sarah and the telemed provider. If she provides the provider name, number one above, I'm sure we will find them there in their records. We should not be fishing for these as Laura should provide the same after she testified under oath to having been seen by these providers and volunteered the information regarding the photo she took and dispatched. She has been on an iPhone for all four men, so there will be accessible iCloud backup. It will be easy for Brian Neumeister, tech forensic expert, to see her images from September through October that were sent to Sarah and the alleged telemed provider. You did want her, you did not want her committing to that process at the deposition, which I understand, but Laura needs to cooperate or we are going to seek court intervention. Our medical experts need to see the images so that they can cross-reference them to the alleged timeline of the pregnancy that never was. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think our discussion about disclosure at both depositions in our chat before the last hearing with Judge Mata covers our Rule 9 obligation. If you disagree, let me know. We can talk Monday afternoon, anytime after 2 p.m. Laura can anticipate anticipate our motion to compel. And Corey's like, fuck this shit, I'm out. <laughs> He's out. Last, it should go without saying that I'm sure you did not know about the pregnancy fraud case in California or that Laura tampered with exhibits that you used as evidence in Clayton's deposition. Damn. I think Bonnie Platter Ooh. realized that the records were faked and that is why they tagged out. Perhaps Lexi also realized the same. He's talking about the other attorneys in the case. All right, we're moving on to exhibit number five. It's another email from Greg to Corey. Corey, this means prior I'm to the deposition. Corey, I'm confirming receipt of the disclosure we received from your office late Friday night. I'd like to quickly point out that the section with the advisory regarding medical records includes alleged records that are already part of the public domain published by your client herself. My understanding is that not only did Laura post them, but she also emailed them to various journalists, including Steve Carbone and David Neal. Oh, I didn't know Reality Steve's last name. That, sounds, that does sound familiar. Now I, I, I recognize that. Steve Carbone. I was wondering that the other day. Like, what is Steve's last name? 
Carbone. She even refers to some of them in her publications, which she appears to be revising to fit the new alleged miscarriage timeline you, you, you presented to Judge Mata last week. I trust she is aware that the original versions have been preserved. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. I have anxiety over the roof. <laughs> I am... <laughs> I'm assuming you are not aware of the extent she has put her records out in the media sphere or her new tactic of revising history. Of course, we intend to honor Judge Mata's directives regarding medical records, but in anticipation, and that order was to not share medical records, Mm -hmm. in anticipation of her alleging there is a leak regarding what you just provided, I'm advising you in writing of the history and that the majority of records provided were the very same Laura published online. So in other words, they're already out there. So there's no reason why we can't, you know, put get put them out there again. Right. Last, I was hoping that your disclosure from Friday would have been something closer to complying with the overdue RFP and Rule 49. This puts the financial burden of discovery on Clayton, but is completely not surprising in light of the history here. We will disclose the records we receive in response to the HIPAA requests. I trust you saw that the first vendor denied any records even existed. We will see you Friday. From Greg to Woody Law Clerk, uh, or to to Corey. And this would be February 27th. Corey, your client emailed me directly tonight. Oh, no. I'm sure we read this already. We've seen this, yeah. We've seen this. Mm. Uh, This was about, but this was good. I'm going to read it anyway because it's great. I'm sure you did not approve or even know about this as it is so woefully inappropriate. Of course, I did not respond. This will be an exhibit at trial. You can also expect my client may release this to the media as exposing Laura's overt and nonsensical extortion does the world good and nothing contained in her notice is private information. Go fuck yourself. But go fuck yourself. I have more witnesses stepping forward regarding your client's pattern of faking pregnancies and using this disturbing narrative to somehow extort relationships. I trust you already saw the three providers your client claimed were providing services have indicated they have no medical records in their system. I look forward to seeing you both on Friday. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Unbelievable. Uh, and this is yeah. the one from Laura to Greg about the extortion yeah, that was letter. The forward that he included in the. And then we have this uh, from Greg to Corey. Of and... Monday after the um, deposition. Corey, at the status conference in February 21st, 2024, you told Judge Mata that Laura had not lied in prior or current proceedings. Oh boy, this is what I was talking about earlier. I trust you have realized that may have been an inaccurate statement in the wake of her deposition last Friday, and you may need to amend your statement. That was this the... is the part Ooh, where he yeah. needs to file a motion to clarify. Yeah. You can't mm. just withdraw, Corey. You mm. have to file a motion to clarify because you told the court she didn't lie. You vouched for your client, which is a very dangerous thing to do in a case like this, right? All right. Number one, you were copied with the email to Planned Parenthood Mission Viejo, as I'm sure you saw. Um, Let's see. As I'm sure you saw, staff confirmed that they do not offer anonymous appointments. And if Laura did go there, which is highly doubtful given the tidal wave of providers who have denied ever seeing her, the tidal wave, she would have access to the patient port. You know, Greg really likes his um, his sea, uh, his ocean metaphors. If you've noticed in the last hmm. the last motion, it was fished bizarre fish tails mm-hmm. uh, spinning a yarn, and now we have a tidal wave of providers. There's something about the ocean that inspires Greg to metaphors. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Or maybe that's just an Easter egg hearkening back to what we read. That's just funny. Um, She would have access to the patient portal and should have no difficulty obtaining the original not tampered with sonogram. Number two, I'm forwarding you the records we received from Barrow. You will note on page 45, 
Laura tells her neurologist during an appointment on November 29th that she or that her OBGYN thinks it was a chromosome thing that caused right. her to miscarry. And she passed two things that looked like fetuses. I am eager to see those OBGYN records. Per, number three, per your client's testimony, please immediately disclose the names of the telehealth providers she spoke to on August when she was spotting per her testimony. And then in September, October, on the day that she allegedly miscarried, two things that looked like fetuses. Letter B, the abortion pill provider who allegedly is the only individual who told, who told her she was pregnant with twins and they were a boy and girl based on what we know now is a doctored sonogram. I was not aware that abortion pill providers were able to use ultrasounds to see the genders at eight to nine weeks. I Googled it. Medical science is not aware of it either. Oh! <laughs> oh! Jesus. Oh, <laughs> dang. Right to jail, right away. Dang, Greg, you are a savage. Also, per your client's testimony, she was seen in August at Honor Health. They, too, have no records of her. See attached. Add redacted to the list of victims. I'm sure you did not know this because unlike the overt lies plaguing the case, Laura lied to you by omission and never told you about the litigation in California that involved nearly identical allegations of faked doctored ultrasounds. Oh, Here is our working maybe theory. The same. Maybe it's the same. You, you remember you said it was seven-year-old from YouTube that she used. Right. It could be the same. Yeah, it could be the same one. She, she, yeah. Here is our working theory of the case. Laura Owens is a serial pregnancy faker and prolific forger of medical documents, apparently for the le at least the past 10 years. Her modus operandi is to force relationships with men who do not want to be with her. Ouch. Well, that's what we have all seen in this case. Exhibit six, it's another email sent February 28th from Corey Keith to uh, somebody at the Maricopa County, at the government. Good afternoon. To ensure an exhaustive list, my client asked that I also communicate the following providers for your records. Oh, this is from Corey. Yeah, from Corey. Uh, Mom Doc and Banner Health. If these are already covered in your below list of providers, please disregard. Oh, Corey, you put your picture on your email signature. No, no, don't do that. Please include, okay, confidentiality notice. I redacted all of this stuff. Okay. Per the courts, and this is from, also from Corey, per the court's request, the providers, we, we, we will be requesting records from via the HIPAA release. Oh, no, sorry. This is from Greg. Why in the world would she need that many providers? This is from Greg, not from Corey. This is from Greg's office. These are the providers that she said she was using and that they're asking for HIPAA releases from and it's a dr higley mccool somebody named lister jones one medical honor health family planning associates any lab test now choice dna arc point labs planned parenthood california smile southwest medical imaging barrow neurological institute and dr zeman yeah a theory she she has to say oh, that might be the providers she has tried to use before in, uh, in the previous cases Maybe. And they uh, made it to under down. Had no responsive her. records. Oof. Yeah. No responsive records. And if those record. names are in private, especially if uh, a few of them are in the previous case against the redacted. Then you this have, is so crazy. Yeah. This is so crazy, you guys. So we're finished with that document. We got through it. We got through the motion to compel. Uh, that is it. That's the newest uh, fire. It's full of fire that 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 motion and I love it. And Greg did another bang up job on it. Let's go to the uh, super chats. Rosalind Duke says, how do you think I'm responding to this? Well, I imagine Rosalind that you will be making another hilarious satire commercial for your channel. <laughs> Those of you who are not subscribed to Rosalind Duke, you need to get over oh. there now. 
Uh, Rogue Mama, I see you over there on the in the locals chat. I'm just checking it right now. Thanks for the tip. Says, I'm having a hard time getting over the fact that this woman had two fist size or larger objects come out of her, come out of her cunt. And the bleeding that would have come with this and mm. not know she had a miscarriage. Well, clearly saying she didn't know she had a miscarriage cannot possibly be the story now because she says she saw the fetuses and was confirmed it was a miscarriage. So that she lied. She's just lying about all of it. All of it. Just total lies. Um, hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's get to the next one. So Brooke Page, thank you for the super chat, says, she lies so much she can't keep up with her lies. My Southern grandma always said, when you tell the truth, you don't have to have a good memory. That is really good advice for Ms. Owens. She needs to take that advice. Lynn, thanks for the super chat, says, miscarriage is one of the most heartbreaking things I've ever been through. For five years, we grieved every few months. I am so sorry yeah. to hear that. And I, I am also so sorry that uh, this woman is making such a joke out of out of this experience. I hate that that she's done this. Unhung Hero, thanks to the Super Chat, says, don't put your crusty Claytons in crazy, y'all. It's also good advice. Uh, Claire Kershaw, thanks for the Super Chat, says, my mom had seven miscarriages before she had me. Oh, seven. It's not something that should be claimed to get out of trouble. Ugh, yeah, terrible, absolutely terrible. Keely H. Thanks to Super Chat says, OMG, when's the next hearing? I'm invested. Oh, it's the trial is happening on June 10th. I will be traveling to Arizona. I'll be in Maricopa County for that trial. I'll be in the courtroom. Uh, Dave Neal will be live streaming from outside the courtroom. We uh, we will be, Recovery Addict will be, ha he will have the stream. I don't know if it will be a live stream or if it will be posted directly after, but I'm coordinating with Recovery Addict so that I have, I'm, I'm going to have the right equipment that I can upload immediately to this thing that he's going to send me. Brad, this is going to be hilarious. I'm going to be like, you, Brad's going to be running my stream at the while I'm there and talking me through the technical difficulties of however I get the hearing, but mm -hmm. it will be, you guys are going to get to see it. Okay. We're going to, and then hopefully I will be having a meet and greet uh, sometime, hopefully with Dave Neal, we're going to, schedule something hopefully he can do some stand-up we'll have a meet and greet it'll be a lot of fun uh, and i'll be there from the 8th through the 12th and it's going to be it's going to be epic so stay tuned for june because that's happening tracy fagan thanks for the super chat says phi rules would apply hipaa rules different from state to state thank you for that info and volpe fox thanks for the super chat says i'm an hour behind no ramen again today i told you not to send me your ramen money uh, but if you refuse to listen, there's nothing I can do about it. It's a free country. Sarah Adams, thanks for the super chat, says, do you promote, endorse, stand behind pimp, pimp shoes? Uh, yours specifically, Sarah? Yes, your pimp shoes are hilarious. Um, keep it up. She has quite a collection of crazy shoes. Um, she sends me pictures of them and they're funny. All right. Um, I am checking the locals chat. Also, I need to check Cash App and Venmo. Oh, no way. St. Dodo thinks that she's figured figured out who it is. How did um, you figure it out? What? St. Dodo says she thinks she's figured out who the celebrity is. Well, if you go back to the year it's supposed to have happened, San Francisco, uh, perhaps it was uh, in uh, the news. Well, I'm close. I have associates of this person, but I'm not at liberty to say who they are. Yeah. But I have not been able yeah. to. Uh, yeah, but, it out. but please, please, yeah, respect that person's uh, decision. When that person decides to move, come forward, it's on uh, his own terms. Oh dear God! There's a photograph. Where did you find it? Where hmm? did you find it? Oh my gosh! All right, hold on a minute. Yeah, no, I agree that I will be respecting this person's privacy. Um, if this is the person that St. Dodo has found, uh, there is a picture of Laura Owens with this person. And, but I do think that it's only a matter of time until people discover this. And it isn't that. It is not Geraldo Rivera. No, uh, it needs to be a short first name and a medium. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it isn't. If now, wait a minute. Uh, St. Dodo, there are two people with the same name, both of whom are famous. Do you have a, can you tell me which one is which? 
And now there's another hint for you. Sorry. <laughs> it's not Elon. It might not be. The, uh, this might not be. This might not be the guy. And this is the other thing. It's like it might not be the guy. Um, mm. We boy. The strange part is, is that both of these dudes with the same name look really similarly to each other. It's very odd. Okay. I mean, this might not be him. This is another reason why, like, I'm not naming this person because I, I can't, like, I, I can't confirm, you know, we're waiting for him to come forward. Mm -hmm. And I hope, I, but it is only a matter of time, though, until people figure it out. This is the thing is that there are people who were there who witnessed it at the time. And the story is getting so big that I guarantee you somebody is going to be contacting me and telling me who it is. And in the interest of, I, we're going to be I digging into this. Joe this is Biden. my job. This is my job. I can say right now well, that it is not Joe Biden. So that's that's the good news. Hunter um, is still uh, in the running, though. Yeah. Um. <laughs> the first name not, needs to be. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That, well, I will I'm say just looking at the size of the redactions, then you can see. Right, it, it's a short the, name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The thing is, I like I can't I, I I can't confirm any of this. I mean, this is it's all conjecture. However, I think it's really important that this person at least put out a statement. Like, we won't bother you. We won't try to get. In interview with you or whatever, if if you just put out just put out the statement confirming that this happened, because this is you're you know you were a victim of this person, mm -hmm. and I heard that it was traumatic for you, and I can imagine that that it that is absolutely the truth. And so we're not trying to traumatize anybody, like we're not trying to traumatize you any further with this. The sometimes media can be really terrible, and like and I understand that, like that's not who I am, but the, imagine the trauma. Imagine the trauma, though, on a man who does not have the kind of access to lawyers and help and money that it would take to fight her off. Imagine the trauma to someone who is now going to pay for the rest of his life because of this, who's $100,000 in debt, $150,000 in debt. Imagine that trauma on top of like the emotional trauma. At least you didn't suffer the financial trauma. You know, I don't think, I mean, I could be wrong, um, but um, hold on. Okay. Um, hmm. Yeah. I hear that Dave Neal just got done with his Patreon, so he just got done reading it also. You guys are coming back to me from 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 Dave. I see where your loyalty lies. I see. <laughs> I see. I figured a bunch of a bunch of you left a little while ago. I was like, where did they go? Oh, you went to Dave's house. I see how it is. I see. Oh, Sarah Adams is guessing Fabio. Now that would be funny. No, it's not Fabio. Um, now I'm like, now I'm super curious and I want to start, <laughs> I want to start investigating this guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not in any weird, creepy way, but just to find out if it matches up with, with what I, with what I know. Um, <laughs> what's the difference between stalking and investigating? <laughs> <laughs> not much to tell you the truth. Not much. Uh, where did I, I want to find out? Where did you find that photo? Instagram. All right. So uh, okay. I have roughly twenty minutes before my what the hell stream, so I will be. Uh, uh, oh, what are you? What are you streaming here. today? What are you doing uh, today? Third hearing. Third hearing. <gasps> I Great. heard well, it was a blast. I will, you said it's twenty minutes. I'll redirect everyone over to you. Uh, so if you guys yeah, it's, want, uh, at uh, three p.m. Eastern. Is it already I set think. up? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Mm. Nicholas. 
I will set up the redirect. So if you guys want to go watch Hearing 3 with Nicholas over on his channel, what's the name of it? It's me. not coming up. It's not coming up under your name. I don't know why. What? It's Is it really... unlisted? No, it's not. It's right. Uh... I follow it's, you, uh... so it should be here. Yeah. It's what's, uh, when Florida the title. man is the judge. When Wait, Florida say, man is the judge. Oh, when Florida man. That, that is so weird. It's not huh. coming up. Oh, there it is. Oh. I found it. I found it. I found it. I found it. Oh. It was just buried. Yeah. All right. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. I set it up a few days ago. So it was maybe a bit. <laughs> okay. All right, so I mean, I can yeah, I can live with being called Dumbledore. I mean, I've been uh, best by Gandalf, <laughs> five people, and uh, yeah, <laughs> need to grow out my beard, be a beard a bit more, and uh, uh, I, I I might actually grow my because I used to have a really big beard, and then I was told by uh, because I still have clients that. Uh, but I'm actually uh, going back to only full time nine to five mm -hmm. uh, after Easter. So, uh, and that is much thanks to my viewers who I know. I, I realize that if the average monthly starts to uh, be so, I get a little bit of surplus. I can actually go down in working time. So, yeah, that'll be good. And provide more content. And not uh, m maybe not be completely exhausted. <laughs> it's funny how I expected you to look silly in the bonnet. Then the bonnet gets here and he looks epic in it. It's unbelievable. It's it's so great how good he looks. Look at this. And his hair is all under there. He looks epic in this thing. This is a good look for you. Yeah, it, it's just a great look. I love it so much. I love it so much. It's so great. Hmm? Leave it to you to just, you know, rock it. Let's see how... It looks. So if you're wondering, uh, this is for hair care. You know, you, when you have, look at this. Look at them luscious locks. Look at those luscious locks without a, without a tangle or, a, look at that. A, a bit of tangle. A little a tangle, at, tangle. The, at the very yeah. end. A little I, haven't tangle. Tried, I haven't done anything for over four years. So it's a bit... Crazy Warlock on Rumble says he looks like Sleepy Time Santa. <laughs> <laughs> we love our Santa laws. Yeah, it's a nightcap, but uh, that it helps your hair stay. Um, yeah, uh, yeah you um, know. because the weather here is so dry this time of year. I mean, we might have a humidity maybe 35, 40 percent. It's so dry here. And that does not help when you have uh, long hair. <laughs> Yeah, That's it's it's supposed to be like it keeps it from getting tangled and it keeps the moisture mm. in and I mean it does look very shiny. Mm. It looks yeah. very shiny. Mm. <sighs> and I don't know if it's golden or bronze or yeah. Well, I love it. it. Yeah. Imagine what my hair would have looked like if I used this when I really started to grow out my hair again. I should right? It would be even thicker and longer and stronger, right? Because it protects it yeah. during the night. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to see mean, if since Dave I mean, is it's done. Quite, it's quite long as it is. And remember, I'm I'm six, almost 6'4". Six and I'm built like an orangutan with a bit, <laughs> I mean, short legs, huge upper body and long arms. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, you're a very large man. I've seen pictures of you next to other people and you make them look like midgets. Just Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, but here's the thing. Over here in Sweden, uh, our average height is somewhere around 5'11 among men. So uh being 6'3 and uh uh and I uh, above 6'3, almost 6'4, it's not that unusual here. But <laughs> When I, I just recently Southern found Europe. out. I just yeah. recently found out that Tug is six four, with really? size fourteen shoes. That is a big guy. Oh, he's a yeah. big dude, and you know how Tug is like super chill. 
Yep. Like I've never heard Tug get angry. Hardly. I've never, I never, not once. And um, I got this, I found this the other day and I, I hope I don't get a copyright on this. I, I, to the creator of it, um, please don't strike me, but I want to play it because I have literally never heard Tug get angry before, but apparently he was on a, he said what everyone wants to say to keyboard warriors. He was on a stream with Ethan Van Skyver so, uh, several years ago, and I guess they had, you know how, you know those guys who, those Kiwi Farms people who go around trying to ruin people's lives? Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they do it to Nick, and they, do, they try to drive people to unalive themselves, and they, they, it's terrible stuff, these people, these nameless, faceless people. Uh, well, I guess Tug ended up on a live stream with one of these guys who had said some nasty things about his wife and his kids. Oh, wow. And uh, Finatra, who has a YouTube channel and he makes like songs out of rants and things, made a song out of Tug ranting at this guy. I've never heard now language, folks. If there are kids around, you've never heard Tug use this kind of language before in your whole damn life. You never heard you. You never believe. But I think I now know where Tug's thugs comes from. If you guys want to know what is it about Tug Life and Tug's Thugs, this might be it. I'm going to play this for you because I was shocked when I heard this. But this is everything we've ever wanted to say to these nameless, faceless keyboard warriors. Acknowledging. You know who these people are? You guys are all the same. You, you, you are not clean. You, you have no backbone, no spine. no spine. None of you. Like I said, if you ran into me in real life, you would be afraid. <laughs> you would not pull this shit in real life. What did you say about my wife? What you said? What you said? What you you said? know, you wouldn't say that to my face, though. Again, again, but you fucking think that you can hide behind a keyboard. I know who you people are. If you ran your mouth like that in real life to me, I will beat you with a fucking hammer. Damn. And I'm not kidding. When we got to when he got to that part where he goes, Mother fuck, I about I about died. I was like, oh my god, I will beat you with a fucking hammer. Wait, it gets better. Because they splice in the guy he's talking to going, did I, did I post that? <laughs> and like, it's not funny, but it's funny. It's not funny because he was really serious. Like he was, he, this is how angry that he was. And I love the fact that somebody told these people how it is. Like you feel very safe online behind your keyboards, you know, making these false accusations against people and saying these terrible things. But one of these days is going to catch up with you in real life because it will cross over into real life and you're going to be eating your teeth. I'm the kind of person that you should be scared of. You are not fucking man enough to step to my fucking face. And no, look, you listen to me. I don't fuck with your families. I don't do any of that shit. Did I see that? Yeah, you fucking my fucking god, dude. Show me the post right now. Did I see that? Did I see that? Show me the post right now. My fucking god, dude. You would not do that shit to my face. So again, you need to think the fuck about what you do online because it has real fucking world consequences. That's the thing. I'm a better person than you because I don't come to your home. So I'm a better person than you. You people know that I care about my family. So you think that's my weak spot. My weak spot is my temper. I will beat you with a fucking hammer. Mama. Think you're a big man, big man. That's what you people don't understand. Internet crosses over into real life, bud. And when you guys cross over into my fucking real life, you expect me to sit here and be calm and fucking just take it. Take it. And I'm telling you, the only reason that something hasn't happened with that shit is because I will beat you with a fucking hammer. <laughs> Think you're a big man? You know, no, no, you. I mean. I got, so I will put this, I'm not going to play the entire thing because I don't want him to get, I don't want the creator to get upset. You guys can go and watch the entire thing over on his channel. You can hear it. It's really that good. Great. Uh, now I did find the original. It's still available on Odyssey. If you want to, if we should probably play it in its context because it's, it needs to be said like there, this is the thing, like you, 
these guys and they're like apparently the guy who did this is like a 400 pound neck beard you know uh who sits around in his mother's basement typing things about people and they think there's never going to be any any consequence and he was actually Ted tug was actually telling him you come see me at anime Mansuri, we'll work it out you come see me say it there <laughs> say it there <laughs> say it there you know like it, it, it's funny because we get this these ideas of people like tug is so calm he's a mental health professional but he explains during this uh this this interview um that the reason he went into mental health in the first place was because he had his own anger problems and there's one line in here where he goes you think my family is my weakness my weakness is my temper <laughs> yeah, we, we just heard that i love it because look they need to hear it like these people it really bothers me when i see some of these things that are being said online about people i know that i know are false and defamatory and uh they would never say it to your face. They would never walk up to you in 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 somewhere at a at a comics convention or whatever. They would never walk up to a Nick Ricada, who yeah. is also a large man, and say the things they say about his wife online. I mean, or to tug about his. Apparently, the guy that he was yelling at uh, made a post about how his wife and children should unalive themselves. Oh. And at the time, his children were like, or they're still little, but they were, you know, babies. How on earth? How on and Tug? And then I find out Tug is like 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, like he's a big dude. Mm -hmm. So is this how, is this where the, uh, the Tug's life comes in? Is this where the lore comes in, do you think? It must be. Yeah. But you know, he's a good dude. He's a good guy. I love Tug. And I think that... Um, yeah. He's he's it, brave for saying it, and he should say it. And more of these guys need to hear it. The real I'm, world is a different place. Yeah. Being in label law for thirty years, over thirty years, I mean, I'm quite immune to threats because I've heard most of it, and uh, some of my <laughs> uh, one of my viewers thought it was a good idea. I know the those people, so they can, and I calmly replied okay i may or may not have represented them in uh, wrongful termination cases so good luck mm. so <laughs> yeah you deal with some interesting characters nicholas like the 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 union guys you gotta watch yeah. out for those those guys but you are a big man you are a big man i think it, one of the things that uh, tug was saying in that in the interview he that really rung true to me because I recognize it in my husband. My husband's the same, same. Um, Tug said, the only thing holding me back is my wife. That's it. Because she mm. doesn't want me to respond. So she's the only thing. She's the only thing holding me back. And that's true. Like, I feel that I know that about my husband as well. Like, he's a guy, he's a scrapper. He's from Chicago. He's been in lots of fights throughout, you know, tons of fighting. He can take care of himself. The only reason why that man is restrained is because of his wife and family. This is what women do for, for civilization. We civilize. <laughs> we civilize the men in our lives so that they don't snap and become violent at, at these small, at these, not maybe not small, but at these insults. And it's just interesting how the internet has created this place where people feel very safe to say things that they would never say in real life ever oh yeah here's a picture of nick in next to uh, regular size dudes now those guys are like normal size they're not midgets mm -hmm. uh, dave <laughs> is uh, five eight and uh, baker is uh, six foot yeah, six so. feet and you're six four six th six four yeah six, three? yeah but uh he, he's a bit he's standing a bit behind dave so he looks a bit too small but uh yeah i'm, I'm next to five eight dave Wow, that is unbelievable! And look at the size of your head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> look I, at the size uh, of your head it. compared to them. Yeah, I I checked it. I my hat size is seven and three quarters. Seven. I don't know if that means. That. My husband has a huge head too. I have to ask him what his hat. He always has to get like the the custom size hat because mm. his head is giant. Yeah, it's a two times XL, uh, seven three quarters. I mean, the, uh, uh, my um, helmet here, hold on. I had to order the bigger size 
because uh, so uh, this has a circumference of 64 centimeters. And oh my God, I it's love kind of this. snug. Wow. Oh, that thing is so cool. I remember you wore that on a stream with me. We were doing, what were we doing? We were, and you told that awesome story about the, about the, uh, the judge's um, gavel. Do you yeah, remember? Yep. Yeah. Uh, oh, IT go to you. You have to drop out. Yep. Thanks for hanging out today. No problem. Uh, <laughs> I have to drop out. I, I, I should have dropped out 20 minutes ago. Oh, I know. I know. And I'm going to be out of here too. And I'm going to redirect everybody to you. So you'll get a raid in a few minutes. Uh, but I will, uh, I will, I'm going to finish up with a couple of super chats and, um, and then I'll be out of here. Yeah. I'll see you, everyone. Okay, but I need to prepare Bye, for Fred. my thingy. So uh, okay. thank you for having me on. And uh, you're welcome. Yeah, I I will see you. Oh, <laughs> for the third hearing uh, in the what the hails, which I hear was a blast. <laughs> yes, the third hearing. You're gonna like it. You're gonna like it. It was hilarious. Oh, uh, they might be a two-hour words within ten minutes. No guarantees here. <laughs> <laughs> okay take care Thank everybody you. go to go and uh subscribe over to nick at uh, trial watch nick starrow on youtube uh mods if you have a chance to throw his link in there you probably have already been doing it but make sure we get over there and subscribe thanks nick oh. okay see you <laughs> bye bye <laughs> bye all right chat it's just me and you all alone so Let's see. All right, here it is. I'm going to bring up Tug's. Uh, it was like right around here. I made it clearer. It was none of his fucking business. Oh, it's a damn problem. Everybody I don't else. know if that could have fucking been it. I love my wife. I was so even much. yelling. I was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. No, I went too far. This is it. We'll go with the guilt by association stuff. What the fuck are you set around in gay ops servers fucking running bullshit with these people? You are servers? not fucking, you I are not, not clean. The op servers. Come you on, are not here clean. If you, if you are going to go with the whole guilt by association thing, something you have railed against for years. You right? are not clean. Again, you would not pull this shit in real life. You want to <laughs> you know who these people are? I need to pull this shit online. You keep, you're oh, doing, you're pulling the that. fucking wheel. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're you hanging had some around interesting things people. to say about fucking, um, what, what, what did you say about my wife that she should fucking hang herself? Isn't that what you said? Did I say that? Yeah, you fucking did. You know, you wouldn't say that to my face, though. If, I if you that, want to, you could come I'll down to Anime right Montessori. You say it to my face. I will say, th I will say this right now. All right, if come on down there. You say I it to my face, this. buddy. If I said that, you say okay. it to my face. I, I'm not a little punk I, bitch. You, you wouldn't treat so me you like would, that. You would yeah. come down to Anime Montessori. You would go meet and tell my wife to kill herself. You would, yeah, you would fuck you. Yeah. If really? I legitimately said that, I you. sincerely, from the bottom of my fucking heart, apologize. Who says, I don't know if I said that? You would know if you said that. Instead, you would be like, I didn't say that. Who says I don't know? Obviously, he said it. There you go. I sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, Tug, I apologize. You guys are all the same, dude. You you have no backbone, no spine. None of you. Like I said, if you ran into me in real life, you would be afraid. But you fucking think that you can hide behind a keyboard. I know who you people are. That's the thing. I'm a better person than you because I don't come to your homes. I'm a better person than you because I don't I have fuck around your with your home. families. And no, no, you listen to me. I don't fuck with your families. I don't do any of that shit. But you people know that I care about my kids. You people know that I care about my family. So you think that's my weak spot. My weak spot is my temper. I try not to lose it. In the past, I would have lost it. In the past, I would have. But I try to be a better person because I take care of my kids and shit. So, again, you need to think the fuck about what you do online because it has real fucking world consequences. And you, you would not do that shit to my face. You are not fucking man enough to step to my fucking face. That's just straight up. I'm telling you.
But if you gonna... think that you can act like that shit, you step to me in okay, real so... life at Anime Matsuri, and we'll so find I'm out one thing. Okay, I'm gonna take your word that I said this. Okay, it's possible. I'm gonna I'm gonna take you at your word. I say one thing, and that means that I am running gay ops. Motherfucker, you no, tell my you're... wife she should kill her How? motherfucking self. You okay. pe you motherfuckers when she was pregnant. Uh, uh by the way, this stream is totally going to get demonetized, but I can't help myself because this needs to be said to some of these people. I have I there are people that I who are working doing this stuff all the time to people I know and love and they need to hear it. It is so bad. And so for sure this is going to be demonetized. However, it's righteous anger. So send those super chats so that uh, I <laughs> send the super chats, man. Send the super chats so that I can get, I can make up for the lost income. With our second kid, people were running around trying to drive her to fucking miscarriage at that time. That's how serious this shit was. People was, were running okay. around hearing okay. that. Hey, let's do it. And you're right there with these people. Who was doing it? God damn, the whole fucking group you're running with. Fucking Smug plus Renfamous and all these other scumbags. Not running with Renfamous. Okay. I am so I don't see a distinction from you, man. I don't I don't see that distinction. When you know the, what? Paul, when the far left and the SJWs make an, make an assessment of Ethan and say he's a Again, racist. Not and fucking accept. And then they turn around and also say, guess what? Everybody Ethan hangs around with is the exact same fucking thing, right? Or yeah, but they're lying about Trump. me. They're they're telling well, the no, truth no, about the, Vicky. The overall point here, though. <laughs> so when people that, say people, Vicky's a bitch and a cunt, and everybody the who's ah, around there's a bitch here, and a cunt though, too, they're telling the truth. Is, is it too late? With, I'm too late. Okay for one, <laughs> I'm too late with the beat button. Inside to do. No, that's you not true. Guilt by association. Guilt by you association. think just one it's random okay. German soldier hanging out with the Nazis, the actual Nazis, is guilt by association? Right before they snap his neck at Nuremberg. No, you're hanging out with these people. You're in but these again, Discord servers planning again, to destroy people. But again, the overall people, point, and, and again, I would point to Liam as a great example. Taking pleasure in trying to drive Tug's wife to miscarriage, and you're here like, it's guilt by association. What are you talking about, dude? I, I No, it's absolutely guilt by association. I say, hey, what gay ops have I run? Well, you're running along with people. Again, it's what Liam Gray does. Liam Gray does the exact same thing. And we saw this on the on the Ricada show with Dean uh, when Dean was on there, right? Dean and uh, Liam had their little tiff. The response from Dean, what uh, Liam says, you know, you're trying to destroy my brand. Dean responds with, when did I do that? I haven't done that. And Liam says, well, the people you hang around with do it. If, again, what have I done? And as I said, I will take Tug at his word that I told his wife to go kill herself. Jesus not, Christ. Not, not How do you not know that? What have I done? What have I done? I, I like I said, if you met yourself. me in real life, if you ran your mouth like that in real life to me, I will beat you with a fucking hammer. And I'm not kidding about that. I'm the kind of person that you should be scared of. I love him. <laughs> What is what is this? Uh, it was March seventeenth of twenty twenty two. God, this needs to be said sometimes. And these people need to be confronted. Like all these key, these people, these these they they're so brave on Kiwi farms, and they spread these things and these rumors and these that this defamation against people. Man, tug. Telling it like it is. That's what you people don't understand. That <laughs> you see me as a professional, a calm father. I, I was a person before that, and the person that was I, before I, that, you wouldn't want to know. Spell. I, I don't. I, I don't really care. Oh, I you would honest. care. No, you I know. No, care. no. You ran your fucking mouth, and you act like oh a you're God. like a punk bitch. You're oh just a God. punk bitch. <laughs> this is your line. Like I said, false flagging is your fucking line. My mind would be if, if there was actual proof provided to me that this shit was happening, all right? If it was shown to be happening, all right? Because I'm going to be honest with you. All this shit sounds like it happened before I would have fucking known about them. And I don't fucking pay attention. I can't believe he kept on going, frankly. Oh, it is savage, isn't it, MG? Savage. I mean, but it needs to be said. These people need to get a check once in a while.
like a gut check, like, hey, maybe I, maybe this stuff that I type on this keyboard might come back to bite me. Attention to the stupid shit. Most of the stupid shit they do. It's I can only go by what I see. And if I do not see X is happening, then my. Well, I think it's funny that he keeps trying to push it off on these people he's hanging out with, but he did this thing. <laughs> he did this thing to tug. Then what am I supposed to do? Because if we're supposed to go off of other people have said this. Other people have fucking said this. Then we can never interact with any swinging dick anywhere. What? Why do you want we to interact with swinging dicks? Do it. What? What? Well, what I mean, I, I will say about? this though. Like, False you know, the, the thing about it is his tug is like you told my wife to kill herself, and you're like, did I say that? Like no, I, 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 I if Chuck said that to me, I'd, I'd be like, uh, no, I never fucking said. Why I would. I, 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 I said, I. You, you're I not sure if you said I it. <laughs> I, I'm saying I me, don't know if I did. What do you mean you it's don't possible. know? You I don't know because you. Oh my god! You, you know, you where, people where would, where you, you, you where, people no, would try to ruin me if I talked about shit like that. You would try to Kiwi fucking farms. You think you're a big man when you go on there? You think you're a big man on Kiwi farms? Honestly. And, and, My and, fucking god, dude! Show me the post right now. Show me the post right now. If you're gonna, if you're gonna say it, I, I, dude, you came on here running your goddamn <laughs> mouth. I'm telling you, you did it. I'm telling you, you did it. I think He's, proof that you did it is that you're not sure if you did it. I, <laughs> I yeah. In my opinion, again, like I if somebody said, you said, shit. "Oh my god." I mean, I mean, well, I, you, you, you know what? When you say a lot of stupid shit, again, you know, one day. You're going to taste your teeth for it, Spectre. I'm just it. telling you, buddy. You know, okay. one day, this the internet crosses over into real life, bud. And when you guys cross over into my fucking real life, you expect me to sit here and be calm and fucking just take it. And I'm telling you, the only reason that something has it happened with that shit is because my kids are here and my wife tells me not to. My wife tells me not to react to you motherfucker. My wife. So you should be thanking her. You well, should well, fucking thank her. Fucking sane. Oh yeah, man. You know you're gonna run around. Like I said, you run the mouth, but you don't think there's anything to it. You you fucking just, I was, oh, I was it's just words, man. On. It's just dude, words, dude. I was asked to come on because Ethan asked me, "Hey, you know, you're a bitch, and I'm calling you out right the fuck now, I right here, because we haven't ever been on one. Yeah, you, you, again, you run your mouth done. all the fucking you time. Have a one on one now." You've had me blocked since I made my fucking account with your little block bot. Because you're a cunt, man. Because <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. These guys need to hear it, though. This is going to be the, this is going to be the interaction. It's about other people doing. You run a fucking block bot. No interaction. No, with I you. run a block bot. Oh no, I blocked your bitch ass. Oh, you because again, there not. is nothing positive about interacting with you, Spectre. The only fucking yeah, reason we are talking you. about you right now is because you finally drew the line. You. Why the fuck would I interact with you? <laughs> I mean, you're interacting with me right now. It's a yeah on somebody else's thing. channel, and I'm telling you right now that you're a bitch. Okay, that's fine. Ethan, what questions yet? This is great. Uh, are you a bitch? <laughs> that just made me love Ethan Van Skyver so much. <laughs> no, I'm not a bitch. <laughs> Wrong answer. Wrong answer. Wrong. You are fake news. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Okay. Well, there's some, uh, <laughs> did you? Uh, are you? Are you really? Did you? Did you? Uh, did you truly uh, fake um, that you were a veteran? No, I did not. What I am a veteran. Now, this is pretty interesting. Listen to the evidence he gives that he did not fake that he was a veteran. I know nothing about these people, by the way. I have no idea what this beef is about. I just know that it was back during Comic Skate and like that all got so crazy. And yeah, Flash, Flash is being so quiet. We're in the United that. States Marine Corps. Oh, there are people who say that there is uh why why do people say that you uh let me let me just ask you that way. Like, why why did they why is there confusion about stolen valor associated with you? Uh, I, I I'm not I'm just not going into that one. And the reason for it is I've ignored it because it's full of misinformation, shit like that. I've ignored it. I um why wouldn't you just prove it? 
I should have asked Brad while he was here, but Brad was in the service. Brad can probably prove that he was in the service any number of ways immediately. If I ask him, hey, Brad, show me your, uh, I don't know, show me some paperwork that shows that you were in the military. I bet that he could. Have ignored it. And actually, just to give you an idea of how effective it's been to ignore it, they keep making accounts saying, give us fucking attention. Uh huh. So, you know, ignoring it has done wonders. If Why would you ignore it when you could just prove it? Why would you ignore it when you could just show the paperwork? Yeah, PCS orders. There's uh, DD-214, the chat says. It's easy. To Flux. Flux is a veteran. Flux. Flux, if I asked you to prove that you're a veteran right now, how long would it take you uh, to give me a piece of paper? to show you have like a military ID. You probably still have one. You know, why would you ignore someone saying that you had, that you, you are a stolen valor, uh, you know, asshole. Why would you ignore that? You know, th this has been something I've done for a couple of months now and it's pissed them off to the point that now they're aiming at Dean and Vicky and people that have been friendly with me in an attempt to get me to pay attention to them. Who? A uh, couple of Kiwis. So you think the reason why Dean and Vicky are in trouble right now is because of you? I think partially, yeah. So yeah, he skipped right over that. So I put it in the chat if you guys want to go and listen to the entire stream. It was, Tug doesn't say anything else until uh, this dude leaves, um, whoever he is. And like, I'm not trying to pick any fights with whoever that was. I don't even know. Um, but I thought it was interesting because there's so much of this going on. There are people out there who want to destroy someone else's life, who want to cause divorce, unaliving, arrests, false allegations. You know, Tugs had CPS called on him how many times just because he was reporting on Amber Heard. Like it's really, it's really gross that there are people who do that. And, um, it's great to hear somebody call him out. And I love that Tug did it. Speaking of Tug, uh, he and I will be doing, what are we doing? I think next week, we're going to definitely be doing a stream next week. Oh, I it's, we're probably going to be going over one of the weird emails that I got. Um, that's going to be funny. And before we, before I take off, before I go, uh, somebody told me that they can't stop laughing at me reading the weird email that Tug got. Um, and I, in my Reddit voice, and I still haven't heard it. So I thought I would replay it, uh, for you guys here. Cause people are asking me to clip it. It was me on tug the other night. I don't know, two nights ago. Let me see. Let's pull it up. And then I'm going to send you over to Nicholas. Uh, here he is. So Tug got this email from someone that we think might be um, this one. My child just fell down. <laughs> because uh, it's a crazy, it's just nuts. And um, it sounds like her. Uh, I don't know. It was an anonymous thing, so it's not confirmed or anything. Um, but let me pull this up. Let's see if I can find the spot where it was. It was like right in the beginning. And you don't know the real <laughs> truth that Jeremy or Redacted have secrets. So how can you make such lies up about me and family and why I call me Turtle Lady? You think it's funny <laughs> to laugh, funny man? Funny I'm man. not a, I'm not a joke or a punch card. <laughs> <laughs> punch card. <laughs> <laughs> Trudel, Trudel purgatory so rude I dare you to joke again about Hidge's knees he had a replacement Roth medicine and not turtle scales that is sick I'm not stupid or a keeper dog keeper dog <laughs> keeper dog <laughs> <laughs> wait I'm broken I can't go on I mean, look, look, it's not purgatory. It's, it's, it's turtle shales. Because 
that's how she talks. Perg territory, too. Look at that perg territory. Perg territory. Welcome to perg territory. <laughs> wait, wait. The turtle, the turtle shales. Oh, this is this is what you when you do voice text and you have a southern accent. Those turtle shales. Turtle shales. shales. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> did not call her those names you pay for rude things my dear umbrella i will put you in the hat rack did you enjoy what i did to your channel that is why you could never get get having them on again you better not say so many seen lies i never said 10 men did that but they did and it's better to chill than to get we'll be coming to you we'll see you we'll see you will see all right all i know is that i really like having tug on my side uh that umbrella guy is a gem get over there and subscribe to him i want to see him hit four hundred thousand. i think he is where is he at he's at three hundred and ninety-eight thousand subscribers i want to see him hit four hundred thousand this in the next month or two it can be done and i'm glad that uh after hearing that uh other <laughs> stream with tug i'm glad I'm glad Tug's a friend of mine. <laughs> I'm so glad Tug's a friend of mine. I wouldn't want to be on the wrong side of Tug. No, but he's such a good guy. And he's got such a great, he's got such a great um, personality and a big heart. Uh, just don't push him too far. I think we've <laughs> learned that today. Hashtag Tug's Thugs. Hashtag Hammer Time. <laughs> hammer time oh my god i want to put that on my board i will beat you with a fucking hammer <laughs> oh man uh it's hammer time <laughs> i love him all right guys go see nicholas he's doing the third hearing fun times indeed <laughs> Go over and see Nicholas because he is doing the uh, more more Judge to Thomas's nonsense. And I will see you guys uh, again tomorrow. Tomorrow at 9 a.m. I will be streaming with Larry on his channel. We will be streaming hearing number five. Hearing number five is happening tomorrow at 9 a.m. Me and uh, DUI guy at nine. So uh, <laughs> next time you see Tug, ask him, what, hey, Tug, what time is it? Hashtag hammer time in the hat rack. <laughs> I love Tug. All right. You guys, make sure you get over to meganfox.locals.com. Speaking of, let me check on them. Is there Are there any tips I missed? Let me make sure. No, we're good. Get over to meganfox.locals.com and join up over there. Use promo code tonsil twins. Gets you two free months when you sign up for a year. And I hope to see you there because we have a really fun little group of people over there. And I'm probably going to be doing another dinner stream tonight. That should be fun. I think I'm going to make something, something Asian, which might be happening. It's a little early for a, a stir fry, but I do have to go take out some meat to thaw. All right, guys, I will see you later. Meganfox.locals.com. Check me out over there. My world is near its end I almost felt my head is full of a million choices I am alive, I'm not here to pretend I'm a dummy I missed the super chats I can't leave <laughs> I can't leave yet k Rab, thanks for the super chat, says Tug is so kind. He has spent holidays like Christmas and Thanksgiving on live streams for viewers who have no one but don't come after we, his family. Oh, that is so sweet. I didn't know he did that. That's awfully sweet. Robert James, thanks for the super chat, says I just got back. I didn't know John Cook was here. Was he here? I don't know. Um, Llama Llama Ping Bang. I love your name. Thank you uh, for the the super chat. I don't know what kind of money this is, but I will take any kind of money. Here you go. It says, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Cynic in chief. 
Thanks for the super chances. Ask JDA if you want to know more about Vickyverse. Speaking of JDA, I may have him on next week. We were, uh, I'm get, he's interested in the Hales case. I may have him on to talk about that. Uh, but I will ask him about that because I should figure that out because I was a little confused about who all those people were. You know me. I don't get involved in all that drama. Max Bang, thanks for the super chat. Says, Tug, just got even more hot in my book. <laughs> Love y'all. Yeah, it was pretty good. That was some That was some fun masculinity there. Not toxic. <laughs> Cynic in chief, thanks for the super chat. Says, a past quote from Tug, my doorbell reloads. <laughs> I've heard him say that. Cynic and Chief, thanks for the super chat. Says JDA knows all the comic uh, comic skate sauce. If you're interested, I know because oh, you, did you know that JD and I came up with the comic skate hashtag? Did you know that that was us that did that? I was a uh, um, my award winning article was written about comic skate back in the day. Welsh Lady reads, thanks for the super chat. Says which is why we need to lift us up and call it out. Uh, agreed. And Llama Llama Ping Bang, thanks again. Some more money to help cover the demonetization. I appreciate that. And I'm sorry that I missed your chats. Sometimes you got to stick around to the end. I'm like a Marvel movie. There could be there could be bloopers afterwards. You know, the credits are rolling. But sometimes I come back uh, because <laughs> I forget stuff. Uh, let me check real quick because I didn't check the cash app or the Venmo. Amanda, Amanda, thank you for the Venmo. It says pump up the volume. Uh, love, Amanda, thank you very much for the Venmo. And let me check Cash App. Mm -hmm. All right, we're good on there. All right, now I can go. Please say hello to Nicholas for me. Get over there and, and uh, subscribe to his channel. All right, let's, let's try this again. I was lost, my world is near its end. I almost felt my head is full of a million choices. I am alive, I'm not here to pretend. I love my friends, my heart is filled with a million voices. Oh, this road has many choices. Oh.
Here's his problem is he should come storming in there with yeah. a string of garlic yeah, and some holy water. <laughs> a cross. <laughs> 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 yeah. May the power yeah. of Christ oh, compel no, you. No, I don't. You realized his house was infested with succubuses. <laughs> Of what if, yes. Suck you, loaders. I don't remember saying it now. No wonder he said drown her before you burn her. Oh my God. Your next witness? Now I know why you wanted to drown her. Laces. Next witness was in Romania. That's correct. That's the end of this guy.